Greetings, everyone. It is I, Kekoski, welcoming you to the stream. The pre-stream, to be exact, where you have the opportunity to get here, get comfortable, and get ready. There's some more King of the Castle. Hello, how are you? I hope you are all doing well. Hope things are good. I bought a door today. That'll turn up over this week, and I'll have to get someone to install it. Fingers crossed on that. Hello, Clouth. Hello, Tentretto. How are you all today? I hope you are all good. Also, did you see the thing I hung up on the wall? I put it up on Twitter. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy. Do you need to install the door frame or just a door? I will not be installing anything. I am absolutely going to be getting a professional to hang the door. Not the frame, just the door. Hello there, Ghidorah. How are you? Hello, Sasso. I hope you are also doing well. Hope things are good. Greetings indeed. Greetings and well met. I hope you are doing well. Sounds like a good plan. Knowing me, the door will be flipped down. Nah, it's just when it comes to something like that, you absolutely get a professional. Even my dad was like, hey, I tried to hang a door once. Didn't work. Get a professional. This is when I find out that all the stuff that I've done is completely wrong. And yeah, it'll all be fun. Like, I got the wrong things. I got the wrong size door. I'm sure it'll be okay. As far as I know, the door is the right size. And I still don't even have a dining table yet. Though we are getting there. The, uh... And I like to play this game with you here. So, uh, I mean... That's fair enough. I mean, that's what streams are all about. I'm not beginning right now. This is the pre-stream, Sasso. Gotta wait until 7 o'clock before we start proper. I'll probably end up with the door becoming important. Probably. I'd rather it just be a way for me to close outside noise from being in. That's kind of what I want to do. That is what I wish to achieve. That is what I wish to do. But hey, on Throne, the, uh, the dining table thing is a third of the way there. I tried hanging... <laughs> Oh dear. Hello, Tom Tom. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Also, I can just post a tangy. Still really pleased that I can post a tangy with the press of a button. Say so press button, receive tangy. Hello, Shield of Hope. How are you today? I hope you are also doing well. I'm glad you're doing well. Look away. Look away. Ah. <sighs> There's the tread water that we probably get thrown into every single rain. Oh, I should change faction cards. I mean, you could. You could if you like. Oh boy, more castles and the kings thereof. I mean, that's the plan. That is the plan while everything goes awfully. But seriously, everything will go absolutely atrociously awfully. Because it always does. I didn't remember how I left the kingdom last time. I think I might have left the kingdom in an absolute di- Actually, we might not have finished our previous reign. It has been so long, I don't actually remember. Three weeks, I believe? I'm gonna go have a look. King Otto doesn't sound familiar. King Otto doesn't sound familiar. He does look very regal, though. He does look absolutely regal. He'll make dude only stab you in the front. Yeah, I, you're gonna stab me everywhere. You're going to stab me everywhere. I know this is what happens. This is what happens. Oh, I think it was... Oh, yeah, the Forever War happened and we all died. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, it was forever for my reign, because it lasted for the rest of my reign. 
which was incredibly short because death. Yeah, th th there was death. Or was it? Or did I win? I don't remember. No, we really died. Yeah, trade and faith are amazing. Something happened. Did I lose a different way? They voted for a new king. Yeah, I'm just curious as to why everything's still so good. That said, the military of zero for the grandees is kind of shocking. Yeah, okay, we, we, we definitely got ash meted. This is a thing that happened. We got ash meted, and then we died. I kind of had a feeling that that would be what would happen. Yeah, the grandees have been doing pretty well for themselves. But they can't fight a rebellion to save their lives. They should go for a military run this time. Maybe we shouldn't. Perhaps that might be what's commonly referred to as a bad idea. That was not good. We need to get revenge. Uh, there will be no revenge. I think it absolutely destroyed our military. Am I still the richest in the land? I mean... Yeah. You have 25,390 money. Just sort of sitting on money. That is what you do. You sit on money. Mayhem! Yippee! And that is ancient Deltic there with 45 months. Onwards, leading a kingdom. That, that is the plan. That is what I will do. Also, did you see that I hung something up on the wall? I hung a picture on the wall. Now the room looks a little bit more like a room. Though it still doesn't have a door. You guys survived like eight rains. Yeah. You have. I've got more pictures that are coming. I'm actually waiting for a, uh, a delivery of picture frames. How about none of those things, PGW? Because all of them will end up in awful. Besides, we don't even have the military for the event to pick up. Like, we can't do it. You can only do it when uh, the march has a large military. And our military is five. Yeah, the combined military is 11. Which is an average of about three and a bit. I put the picture up on Twitter just now. It's it's lovely. I've had this picture for a while, I just haven't hung it up on the wall. Now it's on the wall. The very yellow wall, because my walls are yellow. What's Twitter? It's a social media website. It's one that I frequent. Nope, I mean Twitter. That's what I mean. I didn't misspeak. It is the, uh, the world recognized brand. Is it a picture with Taggy? Yep. That picture is lovely. I do like it. No, I don't think they did because they say the domain is still twitter.com. <sighs> I've eaten way too much food today.
But I had to, because the food was there and it wouldn't keep, so I just had to eat it. It's a good picture. I bought it ages ago. Framed it, put it in a put it by the uh, like on a table, and now it's on the wall. Easy tangy. It's like Daisy Tangy, and Tangy does tangy things. There are like three grandies right now. Three or so grandies. As barons will get our revenge, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt you will, considering the fact that uh, you don't have the military for that. Hello, Gladl. I hope you are doing well. We are here for silly. We are here for lots of silly. You'll get your revenge or die trying. Or I won't even try. I, I get the feeling trying to get revenge would just result in exactly the same thing happening. Which will be absolute crushing defeat. I don't know what this game is, but it looks cool. Uh, you are a noble in a court. And I am the king, queen, or general monarch. My goal is to survive and not perish. And your goal is to make me perish. But you're in three different teams. So you want to win, but you don't want me to win. And you don't want the other factions to also win. So, sometimes you'll be working with me, sometimes, most of the time you're working against me, but all the time we work towards silly. Because let's face it, I'd rather lose and have it be ridiculously funny than win. Yep, you can't win. There is no way to win the Forever War with Ashmead. You will always lose. Always. It's just a question of knowing when to call it quits. And if you call it quits at the right time, you can absolutely get something out of it. The stream to find silly things more than to win. That is true. I hear you with the forever if you have more fun. I mean, I think Ashmead were having a lot of fun. I, I would find it hard, as hard pressed to have more fun than Ashmead were at the time. Hello, Blizzard. How you doing? Also, uh, get tangy. If you, you all want tangy, you just have a flying tangy across the screen. I, I still love that command. It's just like the best little command. You just have tangy. Fly across the stream, the uh, the stream and the screen. Just being a tangy. Also, I've just realised that if we finish Zelda on Wednesday, we're gonna have to finish off. Uh... Oh, we might have to finish off Hide Light. Oh, we might have to finish off Hide Light. Are you all looking forward to Hide Light? You're waiting in the hostel to do labs? Well, I hope that goes well. I hope it goes well. See, all my walls are painted, so now I'm just starting to assemble various things. Like, like get more things into the room. I've got picture frames that'll be turning up at some point. You're looking forward to finishing Highlight? Well got some good news there. It'll definitely happen. We will absolutely finish Hydlide at some point. There will be Hydlide. Look at how small Danny is. Very tiny. Look forward to the epic ending. Boy, are you in for a disappointment. Because I know what the ending is. It's uh, not epic, shall we say. 
It is not epic. The cliffhanger you have highlighted on is nerve wracking. I don't know if that says something about your nerves or about Highlight, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. Template has more money than me. That is true. You, you, you can't, you can't do that. You don't have that command, Tiny Train. You'll have to duke it out between each other. That is not a thing that you are capable of doing. Couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Hello, uh, Marin. Anyone has money has more money than me. But there are no dukes in the game at the moment. There likely aren't going to be any either because, uh, sadly, uh, there aren't going to be any major content updates of the game. But there are still things we haven't discovered. There are many events we haven't discovered. Many facets. We might at some point start a new reign, which will be uh, quite interesting. We might start a new set of dynasties, mix things up a bit, have different people. But there are still a few things we have yet to find here. Have we had any events about Dania? I know we've had the Isle of Saal, we've had Kurth, Atash, Valamir, Tavalin, and the Ashmedian Empire. Have we had any about Dania? I don't know. I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. No, 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 your, your, your uh, GUI is, active, is accurate. They will have to at some point. Maybe that's where the monarch that ran away ended up going to. Hello, Thrith. Daddy is a sleeping giant. No, the Ashmedian Empire is a sleeping giant. That is a sleeping giant. Well, so do you realize now how big our nation is? Like, each of these is a nation in its own right. I still say we could take them, but I know that you're wrong. It's not even a baby there. I know that you're wrong. Don't see the entirety of the Ashmedian Empire, though. Yeah, it's probably pretty big. It's probably pretty large. Just expands all the way down to here. Is it a cheese machine? I mean, I'd like to see it, but uh, I don't think we're going to see it somehow. Does it evade the north? Uh, no, because it's full of giants. I think that might also be what's commonly referred to as a bad plan. A very bad plan. Have we tried, like, not invading anyone? Try just, you know, being nice and not having anyone try to kill each other? It had us fighting, Ashmi, not necessarily winning. Fighting. Also, let's get started with the camp's introductions. We bloody well pulled it off, didn't we? The Barons are finally in charge. And we can sort this kingdom out. Now just remember our little arrangement. We put you on the damn throne, so you do as we tell you, got it? 
Glory to the march? Huzzah! Wait, you didn't sound very sincere. Uh, I'm nervous? I'll buy it. Now introduce yourself to the rest of the council, but don't forget what I told you today. Good luck in the days ahead, Your Greatness. You'll need it dealing with us lot. We'll try not to kill you with a horn or giants or Ragnarok. May my ninth God bless your reign, Your Highness. I have a sword and I'm literally the only member of the military. There's no one else here. It's just me. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices. Meanwhile... What do you think? Will he be a good little king and do what he's told? Oh, there are like no grandees. We need new people, that's what we need. Too early to tell. We should have a backup plan, just in case. Yeah, that's uh... That's a number. It's a pretty good beard. Your Majesty, you may have won the throne from King Melkor, but you must still answer to the Council. It is as is tradition. They will decide what to do with your coronation. Let's get this over with. Should we call the nobles in? So we have... A lavish parade? A religious ceremony? Throwing the king in the river, or nothing. Yeah, I'm getting rid of the nothing. The nothing is bad. Apparently we're going for money. Huh. Or just yeeting me into the river as per de la norm. Oh, it's neck and neck! <laughs> Someone's like, we should totally pray. Yeah, we could raise that religion. With our... Uh, nothing. It's tied! You know, we're holding a lavish pa a parade with jugglers and found it to wine. What's the worst that could happen? The coronation is a great success. Jugglers, wine, fireworks and feasts. It has an impact on your treasury, of course, but what doesn't? Your Majesty, you should learn from your predecessor's unexpected passing. Our time on Celeste Earth is finite. We're lucky if we can make a difference. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Hmm... <sighs> well... <sighs> That is a tricky question. That is a that is a doozy. How do we wish to be our military is strong? No, 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 it isn't. I don't believe you. Do you know what? Let's actually go with uh Let's go with Peacekeeper. An admirable aim. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's stability as much as possible. Once you have an heir, I will turn to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, Your Majesty. Alright. What's happening? Glory of the Faramir bloodline, notorious Marja Hunter stands before a blazing hearth, shouting and swearing. What a coup! Otto now sits the throne. The barons are in charge, but the other reg regions will be already scheming to depose him. Do we stay loyal to the new king, or cut our losses and put me on the throne instead? You've got choices! Loyalist is always interesting because it means you, you, you want to stop the others. <laughs> Templar's like, no. No, we must intimidate them. I get end up with like with the new players. This vote is for barons only. That is true. Only the barons can vote on this. Then it's chiefs, and then it will be grandees. Hey, the king. That's also thing. Glory to the king and glory to the march. We can always change our minds. If Otto ever gets out of line, we can take up arms and get rid of him the old-fashioned way. The barons' goal is to aid the king by countering the other region's schemes as much as they can. They will win the game if the king produces an heir and completes his ambition. However, if defiance gets too high, they can still change their minds and rise up in rebellion. Meanwhile, 
Sven of the Saprock clan, legendary and all the troublemakers, stands precariously on a longhouse crossbeam, droning as if in a trance. Chiefs of the North! We all know I should be on the throne, not this imposter King Otto. How do we make that happen? Subterfuge, prophecy, or hornblower? We've done hornblower before. I don't recommend a hornblower. Prophecy, however. That could be interesting. Oh yeah, we've had a few skips. Hornblower, they achieved at one point. Prophecy. The chiefs plan to realize an ancient northern prophecy. Before King Yuki rises, the kingdom will be ruled by a mad tyrant. To advance their scheme, they must raise authority to five or more in two seasons. Right, lower authority. Casilda of the Far Side 3 lineage, charismatic political mastermind, stands bathed in sunlight, ranting in a fury. A false pretender occupies the throne while my claim is ignored. I, the only member of the military, is a stain on our honor. We must allow it to go unanswered. All right, what have we got? Raise authority. Lower defiance. Lower stability. We haven't had doppelganger ever work. Ever. Doppelganger has never ever worked. I want to see doppelganger. <laughs> Doppelganger's a silly thing. Because it's always been tanked. Well, we should give it a try. The grandees plan to swap the real king for a perfect doppelganger, Biffo. First, they must gain the trust of the Spymaster. You must keep defiance at four or less for four seasons. Biffo will be on the throne! Where's the Wizard of Bell? We don't want the Wizard of Bells. Ooh. I mean, there's the golden choice. There's money. Alright, bankruptcy... <laughs> bankruptcy looms already. The treasury's almost empty, Your Highness. Where the hell did it go? I couldn't possibly say, Your Majesty. Perhaps you've been spending a bit too freely. Apart from raising taxes, we have precious few options. You could get a bank loan, or sell off the crown jewels, or perhaps crack open some of your predecessors' tombs. Most are buried with piles of gold, or so I've heard. Don't do this one. It's really bad. We're not doing this one either. That's pretty bad. We'll sell off some jewellery. You auction off dozens of necklaces, five gold rings, and a jeweled scepter to the nobles. This is a humiliating affair. Selling off symbols of power makes you look weak and desperate. Ooh, look at this tiara. Fetching, isn't it? Don't mind if I do? Hey, check out this scepter. It's like I'm the king. For what a... It was a great, it was a great party. That is true. Your Majesty, I have a brilliant idea. Why don't you hold a battle royale to choose your honor guard? If you let us host the march, I'll even pay for it. And the spectacle will boost our economy massively. And of course, I'm confident the march of veterans will win. Your Majesty, this is pointless. Why don't you just choose your honor guard and be done with it? I mean, we haven't done the battle. We could hold a less violent contest. Oh, 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 let's hold a less violent contest. Perhaps we should hold a less violent contest? By my honor, where's the fun in that? I won't be funding it if you're going that route. But I'll fund it myself. How delightful. What kind of contest would your majesty like to hold? I mean, we haven't done a drinking contest yet. We haven't done a drinking contest. We're, we're gonna do a drinking contest. A drinking contest. Each candidate chooses choose a representative. The contestants arrive at your banquet hall, seating themselves before giant pitchers of ale. You signal for the contest to begin. 
The Marcher veteran looks supremely confident, knocking back glass after glass, but his opponent keeps pace without breaking a sweat. Slowly, the Marcher starts to realise he's outmatched, and panic sets in. Finally, he turns green and flees the table, leaving only the warrior and the nun. The southern battle nun has lifted her mask just enough to reveal her scarred lips. She pulls down what she downs one pitcher, then another. But despite her determination, the northern warrior matches her drink for drink. Finally, and with great dignity, the nun collapses sideways off her seat. The northern warrior drains his pitcher in one mighty gulp that unleashes a belt so powerful it knocks your crown from your head. More! More! Your servants drag over an entire barrel, and the northerner roars with delight. It's not long before that's empty too, and you have no choice but to declare him the winner. Everyone agrees that the event was a tremendous success, except for the marshal, who has to see the doctor after running her eyes so hard she strained her forehead. <sighs> Beautiful. Meanwhile... Your greatness, a shipwreck has appeared on the edge of my estate. This keeps happening, my lord. And it's not even from the north. Its name is the Seraphina, and she bears a southern flag. That vessel was missing a few months back. We feared she was lost at sea. Well, she's been found on land. Right on top of my favorite picnic, sh picnic spot. Ship happens. My villagers only discovered one survivor on board. A southern sailor. He claims to remember nothing of what happened. Oh, my head's killing me. It has been ever since I woke up. Did you teleport the ship? Oh, I swear I didn't do anything. The last I remember, we were sailing along southern waters, then nothing. This poor soul needs looking after. We must care for him in one of our monasteries. Nay, we must interrogate him further. I must know why the ship is on my land. Okay, um... No... Hmm. Hmm. There we go. The chief should hire adventurers or leave the sailors to recover alone and the wreck to molder away. We haven't done that option, to be fair. If you kept B, we could have tried to achieve bankruptcy in record time. I mean, we could have! Don't worry, there'll be opportunities for bankruptcy. There'll be opportunities for bankruptcy. Looks like we're hiring adventurers! Bah! Why must we foot the bill? The Adventurers Guild is always hungry for cash. Put together a ragtag band of their best explorers, read by a woman named Chania. We'll be back soon with news. Don't worry, we never fail. I hope not. So, things to get. There's always a first and last time. Yep. Shiba for winning the game with 300 or less gold. I see that C is being voted for. And F is being voted for. I mean, clearly F is the best thing to vote for here. Or B. No, 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 you don't need to vote. Don't need to vote for, for E. I, I see, you just, you just want me to fail. That's fine. It's fine. I'll be okay. Uh, I'm not actually crying. There. Now nobody can say I don't fund things. I gave a single coin to each. That is appreciated. Well, looks like we might have to lower our authority somewhat. Wait, did... Oh! B got voted on! Okay! Hordling attack, finding a spouse, the adventurers return. Well, clearly, you need to find a spouse. Your Majesty, it's important you find a spouse sooner rather than later. I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What's your preference? Men, women? Don't you mind? Mine is fine. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'll send out messages to the most influential nobles of the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. 
It's an easy enough decision. You got married to the Barons, as we agreed upon before you took the throne, right? Right? Your Highness, I'm ruined! Hordlings have occupied my vineyard and driven my staff, my staff away. Oh no, Sassalifer! You're about to have a bad day! Wow, I can't your fellow grandees help out. My plight is of no interest to them. We'll assemble the council. Ninth, bless you, Your Highness. Well! Strong arm the other grandees into sending military help seems like a great idea. Don't you think? We could just use military. Hordings, oh no, well, time for bot. No, look! There's money in it! Your zero military will be astronomically effective because you'll throw money at the problem. The adventure's already working. In the boat. Oh well, if there's money. The linguistics like, no, burn everything. Burn it all. Destroy. But no. Strong arm the other grandees. We should simply ban jewel crabs in response. Yeah, that will. When the grandees grudgingly send their token force, a slaughter ensues. The hordings put up a meagre fight before scurrying to the hills. Peculiarly, the grandees discover that the hordlings fill grandee Sussalifer's wine cellar with spoons. So many that it's almost impossible to move down there. It will take some time before the vineyard goes back up to full production, but Grandee Sassalifer is grateful for the help. You also got spoons! Chenia and her band of adventurers have returned from the wreck of the Seraphini, Your Majesty, but they bring bad news. Typical. We can only remember fragments, Your Majesty, like a half-forgotten nightmare, but I remember running down an endless labyrinth that twisted around me, co coiling like a serpent. They couldn't reach the captain's cabin at the center. But Tania's willing to return if we give her better equipment. I mean... I mean, there's an 100% chance that we'll succeed here. Then we can do something cool with the wizard remains. Like, we can just guarantee it. Hello, Big Cheese. Maybe they'll find more spoons! Maybe they will. Or they might find something even worse. Maybe it's like a 1% chance that they find something dreadful. Ghidorah's like, nah, I shouldn't let them go in there. And Sabrook's like, nah, just whatever. Just, yeah. Bring the priest to the weird random voodoo guy. I mean, as long as we get in there. We find something awful, no doubt. Mary Yule acquires better compasses and map making materials for Chania and her zealous adventurers. They rush off to the wreck at once. The chiefs tell anyone who will listen that the adventurers are sure to come back in one piece. I'm sure they will. Meanwhile, far to the north, where snow blankets the landscape and wolves howl in the night, the chiefs have covered ancient prophecy foretelling the rise of a tyrant king and the warrior who will overthrow him. A congregation of god speakers huddle around the tablets detailing the supposedly ancient story, whispering excitedly. Praise Morgana, the tablets are genuine. And the gods are good and we are blessed. Sven will be our king. All hail the Lord Render. Cheers circle the clan hall. A mug of ale is tipped over Sven's head. The influence of the old gods is spreading. We must ensure we keep the old ways of the North alive, and surely Morgana will bless us with the power to crown Sven. For the next stage, you must lower your faith to four. Good luck with that one. <laughs> your faith is at ten. Also, you're getting taxed harshly. 
because I need you to get mad at me. Eligible options? Well, here we go! I have found three potential matches for you. One young candidate from each of the kingdom's three regions. Choose wisely. They'll be securing a powerful alliance. And a part of life to have it to hold, don't forget. Uh, indeed, your majesty. The Chancellor said she needs to do a great haul, where they've arranged three portraits on easels. For now, we just covered by a cloth. What, you don't even get to meet them? There's no time for sentiment. You just need to match them. It fits your station and suits your political needs. They whisk away the cloth on the first portrait. This is Sorcha, first-born daughter of the Northern Black Rabbit 13 clan. She's a typical Northern lass, as far as I can tell. Big and loud and all the social graces of a goat, but means well. Spends most of her time ranging them out of tops, hunting wolves and wyverns and other strange northern beasts. Had a bit of controversy a while back when her clan hall burned down. Apparently her peasants were to blame. Mm, I can see the appeal, I guess. From the south, Andona, the eldest heir of the Exum D3K lineage. They're reputed to have an ego the size of the sun, but there's nothing wrong with confidence, right? They've got in trouble with the Inquisition for their interest in potion brewing in the occult, but show no sign of quitting. Oh, and they've been involved in several high-profile affairs over the years. Major scandals. Hmm, I like the look of them. And finally, we have the March's offering. Samuel, scion of the prestigious Ada XZB bloodline. Typical Baron, really. Loud and brash and self-absorbed, but mostly well-meaning. Like most of the barons, his great passion is hunting. It's an old meh. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions. But you'll gain a lifelong alliance. Don't worry, I won't be able to keep defiance high forever. I have made my decision. Well, which will you wish to marry? Sorcha. Of the North. Oh, did you? Well, that, that's probably something to do with the app rather than me. Nope, it's dead. As a break. Not a lot I can do about that, sadly. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't have control over that. Well, at least we can finish this part. Excellent, I'll make the arrangements. Ha! Yeah, we're just too popular. Right, if I try and save... We'll wait here, we'll wait here. We'll see if you can get back on. This game is not made for Kiko crowds. Are we still at the nobles list? Uh, yes, what we'll do is we'll try and quit. We'll go back in and we'll see what happens. That's normally the way to deal with it. Normally. Can't guarantee it'll work. But it seems to be working. Waits for ad, I... I cannot speak for the ads. It appears to be doing what it's meant to. <laughs> there are only two grandees. There are only two. <laughs> Give me a moment. I'll be right back. I want to uh, see about uh, checking something. Check if the post has arrived. I'll let people join.
Well, I'm back, but my thing's still not here. I'm like, yay, my, my thing should apparently be here. It's like, no. Thank you. You don't get thing. You have to look quickly and uh, see if I can find out what's happening with this order. Arriving today by eight. Really? Cause, uh, it ain't here. It's like, it's not here. But no, no, it would say it was delivered. It would say it was delivered. So no, it's just not even been dispatched so far. Yay! Your Holiness, the situation in the South is dire. The City Watch in many of our cities is understaffed, and now crime is rampant. Even dueling has dwindled as minor nobles take up other hobbies, such as like knitting and insect collecting. Bah! We must bolster our dwindling forces in the South. Who knows what will happen to our people without protection? Um... No? No on that one. Every other one, I will... I will say is fine. The South has no need of soldiers. Leave them be. It's like, you don't need troops. The military? Nah. You don't need that. Why did I say so? Just one to suffer with the foam pool noodle. Hey, that foam pool noodle is deadly. You need no soldiers. Not everyone in the kingdom believes in military might. Though the grandees are furious that you've left them out to dry, other nobles praise your forward thinking attitude. Perhaps disarmament is really on the horizon. You have no military. Oh, also this has happened. Hang on, let me just uh Yeah yeah. Chief Baron Yule has his servants bring in a stretcher to the council hall. Chania and her adventurers return for the wreck of the Sarafini, Your Majesty. Is this them? They reached the hold of the shipwreck and found this. It might the other nobles recall it in horror. It's a corpse that almost looks human, encrusted all over with ice crystals embedded into its flesh. Despite the heat of the lamps, the crystals remain solid and glittering. We think this was once a wizard. Could be the source of the wreck's teleportation and associated memory problems. You must handle this carefully, Your Greatness. We don't know what to do with the remains. Can a wizard's body be destroyed at all? I mean... We could burn it? Okay, hear me out, people. Fire. Alright, money and fire. You like fire, don't you? We burn the body. What's the worst that could happen apart from death? Fire treasure, no better option. I heard you like fire. I heard you also like treasure. This belongs in the museum. This belongs on a pyre. Dry as the ship is, the wreck makes an excellent pyre. Rumor has it that when the torches are set, a spiraling tornado spreads up into the sky. After the ceremony, bountiful crops twine up from the ground before the spectator's eyes. The area is known thereafter as a place of good fortune. Look at that! Look at that! Deep in the back rooms of the royal palace, the marcher barons are poring over secret letters and scribbled diagrams. On the wall is a court board filled with pins and crisscrossed by coloured string. 
the king has finally found a match, even though it isn't whom we'd hoped. Now he just needs to get on with the wedding. Aye, and then get on with the baby making! The chiefs have been I've been propping up the king's authority a lot recently, which is highly suspicious. I'd be surprised if they were trying to use it against him somehow. Then we've got to keep up our efforts. King Otto isn't going anywhere on our watch. The barons must continue to aid the king by countering the other schemes. They will win if the baron produces an heir. If the king rather produces an heir, and produces mission. You can produce heirs if you like, but they're not going to be on the throne. Okay, ooh. I mean, yes. The Wandering Bard, the Horde Strikes Again, the Royal Wedding. Let's go with the Royal Wedding. Your wedding to Sorcha is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. It feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Sorcha at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Then I now pronounce you king and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, there's a dance. Your wife Sorcha dances so vigorously that she spills wine all over herself. By the time you find yourself alone with Sorcha, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. Good God, I'm so drunk. Yet somehow, not drunk enough. Time for more wine. Servants, bring us wine. Do you have to bring that axe into the room? Ah, it's my lucky axe! I bring it everywhere with us! Haha, <laughs> it's the spirit! Shall we go to bed together? No time like the present, eh? She swings back the last dregs of her wine and leads you to bed. Meanwhile, the Hortlings are back. Your Holiness, the Hortlings, they've returned. The soldiers we sent already got rid of them temporarily. They've taken over my vineyard again. Those little goits are impossible to kill. Never mind that, Your Highness. Must act quickly to alleviate the spoon shortage in the south. Spoons are disappearing across the region. I'm sorry, spoons? It's no laughing matter. Have you ever tried to eat soup with a fork? It's simply impossible! Fine, I'll call a vote. Praise be! Thank you, Your Majesty. I mean, all of these sound perfectly fine to me. Hmm. <laughs> Burn down the Grandee's Vineyard! That's where my spoons went. More spoons! Alright. Pivot the South's industry into more spoons. What if, and hear me out, we don't do anything? I mean, that's gonna be my choice. What if we do nothing at all? We just leave it be? <laughs> it was just like, nah. Nah, we don't care. Spoon season! Hunt the spoons! <laughs> so far it's the do nothing season. It's just spoons, we still have forks. Have you tried eating soup with a fork? I think that's a problem. Both Grandy Sassaliffa and Grandy Big Cheese are taken aback by your callous disregard for the South. It's fine, it's not fine. Your Majesty, a travelling bard. She says she has come to compose a song for you. Not just any bard, Your Highness, the best in all the land. Sally Six Fingers, they call me. What song you say about me? Why, of course. In fact, I have the tune and verse all but ready. I've saved my best work for you, my king. All requires is the subject. What should I tell the masses about you? What would you like me to inspire? I'll tease them to fear me. I will do so, Your Majesty. Absolutely. Give me but a few weeks and everyone within the Crown Lands will know of your might. Pray, I need only but a small payment of 500 gold for your time. Discounted rate for one as esteemed as yourself. <laughs> we haven't done this one yet. 
but I feel like it would go badly, so we'll take our 50-50 shot. Very well, take your money. The bard nods enthusiastically and heads out to do your bidding. Unfortunately, she's a better salesperson than a songwriter. She composes the song, but it fails to capture the hearts of your people. You have her perform it for you, but it's abysmal. Nothing rhymes, there's no rhythm, she doesn't even pronounce your name correctly. Ah, 500 down the toilet. As is the way. In the south, when he was scorching sun, Grandy Daffy is strolling through his vineyard in the company of a few close friends. What a bloody disaster of a year. We're clashing with the king on a daily basis. The spymaster will never trust us at this rate. Ugh, how goes the search for a look like? Not well. The best I found is a peasant with a wrong shaped nose, the wrong coloured eyes, and a wooden leg. They call him Boffo. Boffo? Who would believe it's someone called Boffo? Is he at least a clown? I believe he is an interpretive dancer. That's not a clown! Don't let it discourage you. Keep searching. A doppelganger is out there. I'm sure of it. The grandee's aim to lower defines the four or less. Back from the hunt, eh? Oh, Otto, dearest, I have something for you. It's something I brought back from my latest hunt. Is it a bear? How could you know it was a bear? Well, it's just that the uh, council room is literally full of bears. Bears as far as the eye can see. Taxidermy figure of a great bear. Oh, well, this will go with the collection of all the other bears that we have. The bear makes a fine addition to the council chambers, along with the other bear, and 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 the other bear. And the weasel. That is the most terrifying thing in the room. Along with all the bears. It might be the fact that we put the weasel in front of all the bears. The number is unbearable here! A rogue golem has crossed into our territory over the Ashmedian border, Your Majesty. This could be an exciting opportunity. What's so exciting about it? Please, my liege, this is our chance to figure out how the magic golems work. We can even turn it against Ashmead. Your Majesty, the barons would drown their own grandmothers to gain any advantage over Ashmead. Or over the chiefs and the grandees. Golems are a fence to the ninth god, and they're dangerous. We should destroy it before it gets out of control. I mean... We could do many things here. Hmm. We could add it to the army. What's the worst that could happen? It'll go fine, right? It'll be fine! Nothing bad will occur. Many bad things will occur. I go for the Argent, but why not? It's such a good choice. Nothing ever happens. Everything's happening. The world is happening right now. You just need to look out of the window and then realize that the stream is actually on your computer screen. And look there instead. It's tied! To the army it goes! We know from first hand experience how well these golems fight. It'll be a wonderful addition to our troops. At first, all goes well. For a while, the golem obeys orders like a good little soldier, but then. Terrible news, my liege. The Baron's new toy went stark mad. Ran to the barracks and killed a hundred sleeping soldiers before it could be put down. I suspect this was an Ashmedian trick. Sending us a golem with instructions to sabotage us. And we fell for it, damn it. Ah, oh, well. However! Your Majesty, the Barons of the Marsh have invited you to a jousting tournament. How delightfully rustic. I love to attend and support a knight. The Chancellor inclines his head politely. It wouldn't be my ideal day out, Your Majesty, but I'm sure you will have a marvellous time. It's alright, we have nine military. There's literally no opportunity to raise... There is an opportunity to lower religion there, Chiefs.
Who oh, are military? I mean, look, okay, so the Grandees have one broom, and the Loyal and the Barons have, like, five brooms. The Chiefs have a military. The Chiefs have a fantastic military. I want money. Taxes took all my money. Well, there'll be taxes next time, okay? There'll be money. <laughs> Please don't there my military is the other loyal golem. We had spoons for weaponry until they were stolen. Hey, if I the lads, or at least it looks like I'll add some subsistence. Is it not banning the sale of jewel I, I have, Alias, I have. Unfortunately, we just keep banning the sale of jeweled crabs. We just keep banning it. Ooh. Ooh. Your Majesty's Sorcher has grown strong and steady like an old castle wall. Though it began as a political arrangement, it's blossomed into something like love. It's high time you thought about an heir. Congratulations are in order. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair. But something's still missing. You need an heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're illegitimate. Or the youngest of your many cousins. Well, we'll have a child together! Ha ah, the traditional method. No one object to that. I'll arrange for you to take a month off from ruling so you can <clears throat> get down to business. Are you in ruling? N no, sire. Filling out our taxes? N no, no, sire. Visiting the countryside to look at trees? No, sire. Finding an heir. A hare? Oh, you can find those in the countryside. No, no not a hare. You're, you're... You're messing with me, aren't you? Yes, yes I am. Oh, blast. Your Majesty, I have come to you on a sensitive matter. Whatever it was, it wasn't my fault. Not this time, Your Majesty. It's become clear that Queen Consort Sorcha is utterly despised by the common folk. She can't appear in public without being mercilessly mocked. Unfortunately, appearing in public is the only thing your wife is really required to do. How could they despise my dearest Sorcha? Your wife is northern, Your Majesty. She doesn't follow the doctrine of the Ninth. Instead, she worships the old gods. She might be tolerable to the common folk if she was discreet about it, but discreet is the last word I'd use to describe Sorcha. I don't like to pry on your personal affairs, but if your wife's popularity continues to plummet, she could be at risk. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. It is my duty, Your Majesty. Shall I fetch your wife so we can discuss? So you can discuss the matter with her? Yes, please. What is it, my dear? The spy master wants you to hide your faith, but I don't think it's necessary. I see. Thank you for your support, my husband. Ah, it'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? The barons have assembled upon a jousting field, watching from tall stands. The place is buzzing with excitement. Welcome, one and all. We have a most thrilling guest today. Cheering erupts as the nobles stamp so hard the stands tremble. My liege, the highest ranked knights of the tournament, are applying for your favour. First is Baroness. Welcome to Tiny Trainworld the Cunning who won every bout last year. Some claim that she cheated, but surely they're just jealous. Second is Baron Zivo Zerace. No one thought she would succeed this year, but she obviously trained hard. People are calling her the underdog. Last is Chief Black Rabbit 13, the, um, interloper. A surprise foreign contestant, but she qualified nevertheless. So, Majesty, who you favor? I mean, I'm favoring... Welcome to Tiny Train, of the Cunning. You beckon her forward and affix the ribbon to her chest. The crown cheers, the crowd cheers as she rides to the starting post. Whoop and cheer. Laughter ripples around the audience. A cheering redoubles. The bout begins. Chief Black Rabbit is her first opponent. Their horses stamp as the two jousters glare at each other across the field. Have at you! The jousters gallop towards each other. Black Rabbit catches Welcome Tiny Trade squarely in the chest with her lance. Slowly, Painfully, she topples down to the dust. The gods are good! Victory! Chief Black Rabbit goes on to win the day, claim a hefty cash prize, and is on track to win the entire jousting championship. Baroness Welcome to Tiny Tremor carries on bravely competing. 
but the Barons mutter that your so-called favour is nothing but bad luck. At least they didn't die! Meanwhile, back in the north, chiefs sit around a narrow table, their flagons running low after a long night of scheming and drinking, otherwise known as skinking. Or drinking? I don't know. Nothing works as well as wine and cheese and... Ah, that prophecy started to look like a bunch of hogwash. Why isn't anyone turned against the church and that pompous archbishop? Give it time, the people are misguided. But Morgana will show them the way soon enough. She's able to lower their faith to foreigners, the return of cheese. Alright. You know what? I'm going to leave taxes exactly as they are. The Marin's had a partnership with the local mercenary guild, make you farm to wealth, all others and nobles gain 200. So, terrible curse, a letter, open faith. Your Majesty, I demand you do something about your Queen Consort. Speak your mind. Sorcha is openly practicing her pagan religion. She has been even erected a standing stone in the palace gardens. This goes too far, Your Majesty. You must order her to be more discreet. The commoners of the capital grow restless, having a pagan rule over them. Ooh. Ooh. Do I show support for my wife? I do. My queen consort can worship whoever or whatever she likes. As you wish, your majesty. And I can't be held responsible for what happens. Throughout the kingdom, priests preach and to outrage worshippers that your queen consort is a pagan who is angry in the ninth god, and across the kingdom, the church's power wanes. Thank you for defending my rights once again. What, what is it, my dear? The archbishop wants you to hide your faith. Don't listen to him. Thank you for defending my rights. Throughout the kingdom, priests... Oh, it's doing it again! I had that happen twice. I don't think that's meant to happen twice. I get the feeling that's a slightly bugged event. Why did that occur twice? I mean, it works for the top, for the prophecy thing. For you. But why did that happen twice? Bug in our favor. A letter has arrived from Baroness to open a tiny tray, Your Majesty. Your favoured competitor in the Baron's jousty tournament, if you recall. She was badly injured in the final bout, and had to pay an expensive physician to treat her leg. Nobles across the kingdom have raised concerned about the safety of jousting. The parade the fad will become even more dangerous. You know what? We must ignore the safety concerns. You all like jousting, don't you? You like bloodshed? It'll be fine! Kigo, could you check on me if Tidy Trade has the most money? I can! Uh, right now it is a uh, 10 player by literally about 190 money. Vote Mayhem! That's what we're voting for. We are voting Mayhem. As the barons slap each other on the back, the chancellor looks pained. Thanks to the council's decision, visitors flock to the march to witness such a thrillingly dangerous sport. The marcher economy booms. A terrible curse. Chief Ziggy Zaff rushes into the council chamber, breathless and in disarray. By the ninth, you look like you haven't slept in weeks. That's because I've been placed under a curse. Look, my hair is falling out in chunks. Perhaps you're old or ill. That's one of my villagers. I saw it in her eyes. She's an evil witch. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Forty percent isn't very likely. Could send in the scholars. 
This one's the money one. If you like money. Interestingly, we might get to phase three of prophecy. Which will be quite fun if we can succeed at it. We might get a prophecy victory. And then I think we'll try our best to have a kingdom where everything absolutely goes horribly wrong. If you insist, but if his curse isn't broken soon, I'll be the laughing stock of the north. Unfortunately, Quail University's finest scholars are mystified. The curse, if that's what it is, does not fade away. Zigizaf is forced to spend his hard-earned coin on dozens of new pats. You'll be fine. Far to the north, an ancient ceremony in a smoky clan hall reaches a fever pitch. Sven, the chief's claimant, sits atop a throne of bones surrounded by godspeakers chanting in a forgotten tongue. And thus, with Morgana as I witness, I hereby crown you the king of the north, the north, the Lord Render, soon to be king of all the kingdom. Glory to the north, Render, chosen of Valtor. Glory to Morgana and the north. The assembled chiefs roar in chorus with each other. Steins are smashed against one another in celebration. Now I must bring down the false king in the south and fulfill the prophecy. The only question is how? Lower Defiance, Raise Farming. I mean, sacrificing a ton of goats just seems weird. Right, so whatever we do, we have to keep the, uh... We have to keep the Chiefs Defiant. That shouldn't be too hard. In theory. So it's destined. So it will be. Spread the word to all of Morgana's children. The Thronebreaker has risen. And the false king will fall. But first we drink, in honor to the gods. More cheers erupt through the clan hall. Come morning, there'll be a lot of work to do. You must keep their defiance at one or less for a full season. Yeah, we actually have a problem with that. Uh, there is a problem with that. Oh, the reaction of the mob! The quiet morning is interrupted by your wife marching into your office, stinking to high heaven and covered in gunk. Blood pours from her newly broken nose. And my speech today, the cobbler has pelted me with tomatoes and rotten eggs and dung. She gestures to her broken nose, blinking back tears. Not to mention the entire turnip. It hit me right in the nose. I demand you have all those responsible hunted down and hanged. Now, now, calm down, dear. Calm down? Calm down? How dare you say that I've been... That would have been attacked by low-bought filth. I want to see next in deuces before the day's out. I could mount an expensive public relations campaign. Town criers throughout the kingdom shout about the Queen Consort's entirely fictional good deeds. Your spy master's agents weave among the public, spreading positive rumours. It works a little too well. Sorcerer is soon the most popular person in the kingdom. Even more popular than you. They love me. They really love me. I'm seeing that there are no events really to stop this. We might get the prophecy going well. I regret to inform you that the jousting related petition from the March, Your Majesty. Why the, re why the regret? It's a splendid idea. Your Majesty, we must reinstate jousting as the official justice system of the march. Trial by combat's the way it used to be, before the court started sticking their noses in. Hmm. Better to stick with the courts. Well, at least we get to see what happens when someone gets ritualistically sacrificed for the old gods. This will be interesting. Unless we can raise defiance. It's a little unfortunate that we just haven't had an event where it goes up. We were doing pretty well otherwise. We can still make it happen. Baron Nebula Scorn bows deeply and leaves with a sigh. A wise choice, Your Majesty. There's no more talk of a 
of trial by joust. In fact, many competitors sell their horses and equipment to enterprising merchants. Finally, stargazing. This simply can't go on, Your Majesty. Those arch boffins think they know everything, that they know nothing of the Ninth God's wrath. Please, Your Majesty, we've had a perfect sight for an observatory. High in the southern hills, but it's on Grandee Mad Steve 79's lands, and he refuses to let us build there. Such things are heresy. The stars are just as big and close as the Ninth God intended. Who put you up to this idea, hmm? But it was on the barons like Shield of Hope. I mean... Does it matter at this point? I, I think we might have a victory for the Chiefs. The prophecy victory. It's going to be very painful. But it will be an interest it will be another achievement, another victory. Then then the boot can be on the other proverbial foot. As slowly the kingdom degrades. Well, it was prophesied. This is true. It was. It was. The grandees grumble and groan, but construction goes ahead. Over time, the observatory provides new jobs and brings many traveling scholars to the area, paying for itself many times over. The barons are gathered in the empty council hall late at night. A new report and one of the spies has just come in. Great God! The chiefs held some kind of pagan ceremony last month. They crowned Sven as King of the North. Bah, why should they care about their weird traditions? We still own the kingdom. The chiefs won't stop with just the North. The Whispers. They want to depose Otto and restore him as King of all the kingdom. Problem is, we don't yet know how they plan to do it, and the king still has yet to produce an heir. Perhaps it's worth changing tact? If it's too late for King Otto, we might get out while we can. Our only option now is to retake the throne by force. If we think Otto is too weak to hold it. But that's an all or nothing play. If we rebel now, all our goodwill will be gone. Not to mention a few of our heads if we lose. We'll be back to square one. Ooh! Ooh! D! Vote for D! Or, nah, D won't work. Just vote for anything you like. It doesn't matter. Just stoke fires. Invent a reason to get angry. Just, just get mad. Not a weak king, just a king that's about to be murdered. It doesn't matter. We haven't seen this dialogue. Bless you for being nice to your wife. You know, just last week Otto accepted a glass of brandy from me without saying thank you. Just because he's the Otto doesn't mean he can get away with that. Aye, I don't think I've forgotten about the time he borrowed my crossbow and then lost it somewhere in the Black World. Sure, it was a worthless old hand-me-down, but it's the principle of the thing. The barons try to start a rebellion if their defiance is high enough. Otherwise, they must continue to aid the king by countering the, re <laughs> the other region's schemes. Yeah, about that. Yeah, about that. Your Majesty, most exciting news today. The Northern Chiefs recognize the turbulent state of the kingdom. Even so, they decided to throw their weight behind, behind you, for better or worse. What a coup! They've invited you as a sight sign a court of friendship and witness their commitment of unwavering loyalty in the special ceremony. Some kind of Northern custom involving a blood oath. Blood oath? I'm sure it's nothing serious. I imagine they'll just want to shake your hand. Once your palms are cut with a knife, perhaps they'll sacrifice a goat? Now that would be a show. They've taken the liberty of arranging a trip. Chief Chen Teto, the second and Queen Consul Sorcerer, were most helpful with the preparations. But it's so cold up there. Don't fret, Your Majesty. During the summer, the weather is quite mild. You'll be leaving at the end of the week. I didn't see any reason for delay. Before you head north, however, you must make sure to check in with Sorcha. Ha! Watch that it sacrifice you in a crazy pagan ritual! But seriously, enjoy my homeland and say hi to my family if you see them, dear. I'm worried it might be some kind of trap. A trap? Don't be silly, love. If the chiefs didn't like you, they'd tell you to your face. Trust me, I'd know. Bring me a souvenir, maybe? I could really do with a new winter coat. And the ones down here just aren't the same. The journey north is long and arduous. After your carriage gets stuck in the mud a third time within many days, you wonder if maybe you should have diverted more funds to northern infrastructure. Such a pleasure to see you, Your Greatness. I hope the ride wasn't too difficult. How are you finding the north so far? It's rubbish. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad to be away. It's not warm. That's what the welcome is for, eh? 
We've got food and drink laid out for you. Some of the North's best meats do tuck in. The food is pretty good. Uh, the music's not bad either, though you're not sure the bard is singing about half the time. Lovely song, I think. Isn't it? It's about the mad tyrant king who is overthrown by a young warrior chosen by Valtar, a new favourite of mine. A faint chill runs up your spine, but you shake yourself out of it. It's just the draft. So, almost as soon as you polish off your meal, Chief Trinchetto summons you out into the cold. You find a massive chief circling a gigantic barren oak tree. In the distance, a northern godspeaker chants a deep, droning incantation in a language you don't understand. How do where do I stand? Right over there, your majesty. Just underneath the tree. Perfect. You stand beneath the tree behind a chanting godspeaker. You spot the dagger in hand, but no sign of a goat or a cow or any other sacrificial creature. Now then, chiefs of the north, it's time to take your oath. Do you all swear your fealty to the one true king from now until your dying breath? And she spoke with a raucous shouts of approval. By the old gods, I do! I could use this. Then raise your axes with me, siblings. Let us bear witness to the start of a new age! The Lord Render, chosen of Valtar, will now be bathed in the blood of the Pretender. Wait, who? Oh, I think you forgot the goat. Just then, the Godspeaker grapples you from behind. As a knife kisses your throat, you try to shout. Only a gurgle comes out. Your northern chief, your northern guards stand idle as your throat is slit, clearly contempt with what's happening. You collapse to the ground, and everyone cheers. Just as you're on the edge of consciousness, Sven, the chosen of Valtor, ambles over to you, kneeling over to your body. The king is dead. Long live the king. As Sven is bathed in King Otto's blood, a bolt of lightning struck the sacred oak, splitting it in two. It's a sign from the old gods. The Lord Render has risen. Unable to keep their puppet on the throne, the barons are forced to retreat in their secluded fortresses and brood. It wouldn't be long before a new march of claimant would rise, and when they did, the barons would be ready. All that remained of the grandee's attempts to usurp the crown was a prisoner deep under the castle, clad in an iron mask and shrouded in rumour. Sven the Lord Render marched south at the head of an army. Valtor was with him. The throne was seized by force, and the power of the old gods could never be denied again. Otto the Stern. I think we may have misidentified the real threat this raid. Yeah, it was the North. That's a fantastic beard, but we have a problem. And that problem is you have inherited this kingdom. You see, this wouldn't have happened if I'd have uh, decided to uh, not support our, uh, our wife. But that's what you do with love, eh? You support them. Good news, though. Now the Chiefs are in charge. And this is probably going to end really badly for them. Probably end really poorly. Free beer for everyone. You did it! You seized the throne! We showed them what the Chiefs could do, didn't we? Now just remember which side of your bread is buttered. You answer to us, got it. Long live the North! Ah, that's the spirit. Now introduce yourself to the rest of the council. But don't forget what I told you today. Hey, guess what? Our military's still just this sword that we've got here. Well, our military got a lot worse, but my sword's slightly fancier. Every time a chiefs were in charge, it ended but He kind of did. What do you think? Will he be a good little king and does as he's told? Too early to tell. We should have a backup plan, just in case. Here we go. Your Majesty, you may have won the throne from King Otto, but you must still answer to the council. As a tradition, they will decide what happens at your coronation. But, but it's my coronation! This is an absolute monarchy, Your Majesty. Everything has to be run by a council vote. Even this. Shall we call the nobles in? I mean, there are lots of ways this could go wrong. We should absolutely hold a northern pagan ceremony. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen?
Let's drive into the ground. That's exactly what's probably going to happen, Temp player. It's going to be a catastrophe. Let's not throw the king in the river. I mean, we didn't throw the king in the river last time, but look what happened. Disaster. You hold a traditional northern ceremony in the palace. Of course, that means you're stripped nude, flogged with birches, and bathed in goat's blood while a godspeaker chants the ancient rites of Morgana. It is all thoroughly pagan. The church is outraged, and so are the common folk. They should just be grateful you didn't include the ritual sacrifice. That happened last reign. Yeah, Queen, Queen was incredibly happy. Also, this happened again. But, uh, just, just, there we go. Your Majesty, the history books do not look kindly upon usurpers. Unless, of course, they prove themselves worthy of the throne they have stolen. When you die, how will you hope the kingdom will remember you? Hmm. Probably as the greatest king who ever lived. I see. You're the type who likes to build lots of statues of yourself, aren't you? I suggest over the next few years you'll focus on proving your authority as much as possible. Once you have an heir, we'll return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. Probably is. Yvette of the Templar bloodline, legendary marcher hunter, stands before a blazing hearth, shouting and swearing. When did the barons of the march ever back down from a fight? Never! We fought the Ashmedians to the bitter end! We don't talk about the end. So, what are we going for? Intimidation, uprising, or modernization? I mean, modernization's probably going to work pretty well. <sighs> I, 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 in fact, both of B and C will probably work pretty well. Military's kind of rubbish. But we can make it even worse. The Barons plan to modernize the Kingdom's army in such a way that it's totally under their control. First, they must prove the military is in need of reform. To advance their scheme, you must lower the regions combined. The other regions combined to a total of ten or less. Oh my word, it's at six. Esrid of the Kid of Burden Clan, infamous northern rascal, stands precariously over a longhouse crossbeam. Morgana's with us. Sven now sits on the throne, and the chiefs are in charge. The other regions are already scheming to depose him. Do we stay loyal, or cut our losses and put me on the throne instead? Oh wow, you only get two options. You only get two choices. You get Loyalist or Ragnarok. That's all you get. Normally there's three. Why have you got only two? Maybe it's because of the conditions that meant that we, uh, that you got the, uh, throne. That settles it then. Long live the king! May he bring glory to Morgana. We can settle, we can change our minds, of course. We can always just overthrow him. We do have the most military. Meanwhile, it's Zim, uh, Zimla, or Zilma rather, the Daffied McBrain lineage. A false pretender occupies the throne while my claim is ignored. Careful with that rock, that's 50% of our military. Sorcery, subterfuge, or doppelganger. I mean, I want to raise my authority, so that's not a bad thing to pick. But it would mean farming. You'd have to lower farming. So subterfuge might also be good. Vote Biffo. Never vote Biffo. Never vote Biffo. Give me one little moment. By the way, we lost that first one in like an hour. We lost that first one in an hour. Oh, my package is now expected on the 2nd of May. Oh. No hanging stuff for me for a few days now. 
The Grandees plan to make a bargain with a wizard. These immortal spellcasters seldom get involved in political squabbles, but perhaps if the king was considered a threat to their autonomy. Also, did you know that I've got a table up on throne? So I can actually eat food at a table? To so advance their scheme, the Grandees must raise authority to five or more in two seasons. Well, it's already at five, so uh, this one might be a problem. You know what? I'll pick it. I know Monarch's Iron Choice is there, but we like money. The Chosen of Valtor. Lord, hail, Lord Red, the Chosen of Valtor. The prophecy has come to pass. You sit upon the throne as foretold at a time before time. But one last part of the prophecy remains. You must return Torgir Halbjorn's legendary axe to the north. It was stolen from us by King Arald the Great during his conquest of the clans. It belongs up in the Hall of Heroes, not in the palace vaults as another dusty relic. Nay, your majesty, you must, your honey, you mustn't. That axe was given to King Arald as a symbol of the chief's submission to the throne. To return it would fan the flames of northern independence. This is your destiny. This is why you took the throne. You know what? Send the axe back. <laughs> Set up a timeshare. <gasps> no, it's so stupid. But also, no, we're literally going to fulfill our prophecy. <laughs> it is like, yes, timeshare. Now this is like timeshare. Love timeshares. Do we people want the time? I do. Uh, they, 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 writ no. Thank Morgana, the gods are good. After four long centuries, the axe returns to its homeland. King Arald spilled an ocean of blood for that axe. You'll forever be remembered as the king who threw it away. Though it upsets the Grandees and Barons, the common folk are pleased to see the axe of Torgir return to its place of origin. An ancient theft has been put right. As a tradition, each region offers a selection of elite guards, the chiefs with their most famous warrior heroes, the Grandees with their fierce battle nuns, the Sisterhood of Steel, and the Barons offer a squad of battle-hardened veteran soldiers. Unfortunately, we can't recruit the March of Veterans. There's been a major scandal. Some of their, some of them were making up their military records. The medals are made of tin, and the scars are from farming accidents. They won't come to the capital until this blows over. You'll need to pick someone else. Well, oh, I was going to take the March of Barons. I, I guess I'm taking the Southern Nuns then. Game? Game, are you breaking? Oh, how could you choose them, my lord? Wait, who are you? I'm, I'm just a peasant from down under the battlements. I can't believe you'd pick the battle nuns rather than the march of people. I actually know how... I actually know why this happened. This happened because we are currently being propped up by... No, actually, I don't know why this happened. <laughs> She's just so upset that they glitched, like, and just gone. I will make the erasures at once. I have no idea what happened there. Yeah, I don't know either. Shut up down there. The Madelons arrived at the palace a few weeks later. They nod to you silently, their solemn steel mask betraying nothing before filing into formation behind your throne. Meanwhile, oh. Your Majesty, the Archduke of Saal has invited you to his forthcoming wedding. Your attendance would help shore up relations between our two great nations. Why the ninth great nation? The Isle of Saal is nothing more than a nest of pirates and cutthroats. And I heard it is the proper marriage anyway. The Archduke is marrying a fish. The groom is a finfolk, one of the denizens of the sea. Perfectly sapient, magically amphibious. Well, the church doesn't agree with a man marrying a fish. We must legitimize this farce by allowing the king to attend. I mean, of course the king will attend this wedding. I 
I mean, why wouldn't we attend the wedding? It sounds great. Fish wedding. This time, however, we, we might be very sneaky. I vote A only because I like fish babies. Maybe we won't have fish babies. Excellent! The wedding is scheduled for next year. I'll inform the Archduke and you should be del that you should be delighted to attend. Hmm. This kid is sliding into madness. When it's announced that you will attend the wedding, the grandees are naturally scandalized. But the peasants, sentimental as ever, are in favor of your decision. Public opinion turns against the overly strict church. Well, many things can be voted upon. I mean, I wholeheartedly think that we should all vote for F because, wait, is it F we want to vote for? No, no, I think we should all wholeheartedly vote for, actually, you could just vote for whatever you like. Because let's face it, we're going to be tanking this kingdom into oblivion. That's kind of what we're going to end up doing. It's like, hey, I heard you like this kingdom. Nah. And thus, the kingdom descended down the portaloo. How bad can it go? Can we get to the bankrupt ending? Can we get to the... Ooh, we could try going for the bankrupt ending. Like, no... We have, we've had no authority. But we haven't had no money or no stability. I see faith is going down even lower. The island rises, finding a spouse will obviously I know what we're doing here. Your Majesty, it's important to find a spouse sooner rather than later. I'll take the liberty of finding I'm not interested in love. I are you sure, Your Majesty? The nobles will be most upset. Surely it behooves you. No. Very well, I shall speak no more of it, but why? I want to party I see. Far from be it from me to question my king. Good luck in the days ahead. You'll need it. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, something most strange has occurred in the Ghost Sea. A new island has risen halfway between our shores and the Isle of Sal. The Finn folk raised it from the depths using their weird ocean magic. It's true, Your Majesty. The Finn folk raised the island to celebrate the marriage of their prince to the Archduke of Sal. They were gifted to him on the day of the ceremony. This is terrible news. The island is of immense strategic importance. We can't let it fall into Salish hands. Um. We we could um. We, 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 we could we could seduce the Finn folk prince, sabotaging. I mean, we could just go with the blunt option here. Could just do that. We've got to go with the other sneaky option, but now there's money involved. I'm not going to kill the sexy fish man gonna torpedo this kingdom. Capital idea. You want me to sleep with the fishes? You needn't go that far, but you're unattached. Uh, you'd make a far better match for this Finfolk Prince than the Archduke of some brainy island. Very well, I'll seduce the sexy, sexy fishman. We all admire your sacrifice, your holiness. Preparations begin for your clandestine visit to one of the Finfolk's undersea villages. Your Chancellor has heard of magic reeds that allow the bearer to breathe underwater, but such a thing will take weeks to track down. At least it gives you time to prepare your, under your underwater visit. Buy some waterproof roses. Meanwhile... Your Highness, I bring ill tidings from the north. Wildlife has gone berserk in the rural areas. They're attacking villages and travelers all across the region. Tell me about them. 
They are great hulky beasts, clearly twisted by magic. Some say they walk and talk like people, but all the warriors are afraid. They say the creatures are a dark over and a side of the end. Hey, Gad, what's gotten into these sheeps that can't handle a few wild animals? The other regions have plenty of their own problems, Your Holiness. No one wants to march up to the throes of North to do something about this. Are well, you always useful as nipples on a breastplate? Point of order, Your Highness. Though the church's presence of the North is minimal, we could provide shelter for those who need it. All be welcome, whether they are adherents of a true god or not. It's the least we can do. Or, if you can afford it, send a detachment of mercenaries who aren't afraid of a few wild bears. I should put an end to this crisis. We could go bankrupt. Or we could do something else. I mean, how much do you want us to see us seduce the sexy, sexy fish man? Would you prefer to see bankruptcy? Because we haven't done bankruptcy yet. We should do sick. Right, let, let's go bankrupt. Let's do it. I mean, this will bolster the military might of the chiefs. <laughs> Willingly going for bankruptcy. Then the next thing we should do is clearly tank our stability. See how the ending for that goes. The one when we just destroy the entire kingdom. Well, here we go! You find a suitable company of mercenaries to send an officer from your own city watch to oversee the expedition. They return with tales of a glorious hunt and legendary northern hospitality. P Chief PGW Tales is happy to report that the beasts have been forced back into the wilds. <laughs> Meanwhile... Down in the south, Grandy Farsight is practicing her swordplay, cutting a dummy to ribbons. Suddenly the sky turns black, a flash of light, a boom of thunder. A figure stands where the charred scraps of a dummy used to be. I am Athmarel, Wizard of a Storm. Speak your peace, mortal, and be quick. Oh, never mind, I see the kingdom is literally broke. I thought we might have a common goal. The king's been overstepping his bounds recently, hasn't he? This is undeniably true. Watching from the clouds, I have observed many grave injustices committed by the king's minions. Technically, the, pr the precepts of magic forbid me from intervening. But alas, my colleagues abandoned that rule long ago. I suppose I gain nothing from keeping it to it still. One thing, though, you must deal with the bees on my behalf. Did you say bees? Oh, yes. They're really annoying, and they, they prevent me from interfering in the dreams, but literally the king is broke. Have you seen it? He can't even find 50p down the side of the couch. D forget about the bees. I'm going to be completely useless. Next stage of the scheme, you must lower farming. That is never going to happen. Meanwhile, we get 300 money. However, ooh, ooh, hang on. Oh no. Oh, can we make this work? Um, if I do that and that, oh no, oh no. Oh! So if I do that, we go down to minus 1300. That puts us to 100. Mm. That puts us to 100. The game won't let you go negative. Oh! No! Normal, cruel, normal. That puts us to 600. Nope, won't work. Nope. How about normal that normal? Nope, minus 500. Minus 500? Oh, no! 
we were so close. It's so hard to go bankrupt. Yeah, we're trying to keep a balance of zero. We want to get to zero. Hello, um, Sam. How are you doing? I, we, yeah, but we can only spend money if we actually have money is the problem. Like, you can't spend money you don't have. The game won't let you. Alias lose, use your math wizardry. Oh, I'll have to go with... Can we get it lower? Can we get to a hundred? We can get to a hundred money. We're at a hundred money. Bankruptcy looms. Treasury's almost empty, your highness. Well... We got we gotta think of some of them. Oh, all of these are bad. Hang on, we want to tank the economy, right? We could just make more money. Just print more money. Or we could do that and it would make more sense because then we'd have Yeah, we should probably just sell off some jewelry. Bank loan is the quickest one. We have opened the tombs. Hmm. Loan is the best for ruining the economy. Well, take a hefty bank loan. The Bank of Salmon operates the fabulously wealthy Republic of Kerth. They assure you, however, they maintain total dependence on the Republic. The bank has sent the signature, delicate hands and sharp teeth. He watches you put pen to paper. You'll make an excellent decision. You shall pay us back with 25% interest in one year. Saddling the kingdom's debt with great optics, but you have no choice. Right, so we need to make, uh, money. It's a snowy winter night just like any other until you awake to screaming in the courtyard. Rubbing it asleep from your eyes, you trudge over to the window and push it open. A cool breeze washes over you, as does the pale light of the crescent moon. Then you hear it again, a blood-hurdling scream, followed by the sounds of shouting from below, then a deep, guttural roar. Something is attacking the palace watch. Clearly I'm going to go down and find out what. You look around the room, as the assortment of arms to choose from. Predecessor's old sword. Brandishing the weapon in your hand, you get a feel for its weight before slowly pushing open the chamber door. Your honor guard is nowhere to be found. Silent. Stepping bravely into the darkness, you begin your search for the source of the horrible noise. The silence is more than you can bear. There's another scream, this time it's much closer, around the next corner. A watchman is thrown against the wall in front of you, falling limp to the ground. Before you can react, the creature appears in the dim torchlight. A hulking, mutated, ursine figure stands before you on two legs, its maw dripping with blood. You don't have time to think before it roars. The sound is deafening. Lunge at it! Before it has time to think, you jump forward with your sword, battling away its trunk-like arms to swipe at the creature's exposed neck. You plunge the sword well into its thick fur, dodging the counterblow as it tries to fight you off. A moment later, it slows, fatally wounded by your attack. The giant corpse collapses, and you dive out of the way just in time. Then everything goes still. Moments later, your martial and honor guard come rushing to into the room. I came as fast as I could, Your Majesty. What in the name of the Ninth God is that beast? It's dead now. That's all that matters. Yes, Your Majesty, of course. The creature's body is dragged away and eventually donated to the University of Quail for further study. Stories spread of your bravery and martial prowess. Commoners and nobles alike find new respect for the king who has slain a bear in his nightgown. I mean, that's cool. The Finn folk send a stagecoach made from a giant clam pulled by seahorses. You equip your magic re breathing reed and hop inside. The clam carriage plunges back beneath the waves, and you are whisked down into the murky depths. A few hours later, you arrive at an undersea citadel of kelp-woven huts. 
the prince meets you at a grand table formed of knotted coral. Tiny finfolk spawnlings swim around your legs as you sit. Greetings, Your Majesty. I'm glad to be back in the game. We are honored to have such a prestigious visitor. This place is amazing. A whale passes overhead, momentarily dousing you in shadow. So you're here to discuss my betrothal to Archbook Shomo on the island I'm giving away as a dowry. I mean, how are we going to do this? Are you, are you going to, uh... Are what happens if you PM off? Probably bad stuff, if I were to be honest. The question is, do we want to marry the sexy, sexy fin folk ma fish man? You can! We have done so before. Shall we again marry the sexy, sexy fin folk? We've done so before. We even had an heir of the fish man. <laughs> More like fine folk, am I right? A wooga! Your clumsy attempt at seduction is beneath the dignity of your office. I have to be married soon, remember? I have no more time for your foolish games. Goodbye. Your clam coat spirits you back to the surface. As you wade into the beach, you gasp for breath. The air never tasted so good. So how did it go, your majesty? Did you successfully seduce the fist man? Alas, the opportunity never came up. Well, that's a shame, I suppose. The Chancellor listens intently as you describe your conversation with the Finfolk Prince. Most unfortunate, your majesty. The wedding will go ahead as after all. At least you tried. <laughs> Meanwhile, deep in the back rooms of the royal palace, scheming. The king refused to marry despite everyone's advice. He'd better at least get on with finding an heir, or all our heads will be on the chopping block. Too right, I heard of a secret meeting between the grandees and the wizard Athmorel. Gods only know what they were discussing, but it can't have been good. Then we best keep our efforts. King Sven isn't going away on our way. We totally tried! We totally tried! We, we did stuff and things! So... We want to keep all this, so we want to try and get 900 money... Don't try! I mean... We're gonna try and bankrupt ourselves. You might get the opportunity to go into the crown anyway. Um... We're not going to get money this way. We need money, pretty much. Your Holiness, in a few days, you'll be travelling to the Archduke of Saul's controversial wedding. Surely there's a way we could turn this to our advantage. We must forge an alliance with Saul. They have fast ships and, with their new island outpost, control over most of the ghost sea. Or we could publicly object to this blasphemous union of man and fish. He's not fish, he's a finfolk. Ah, same difference. This is a matter of the council, I believe. We could seek an alliance with Saul, I mean. We haven't done this yet. Let's ally with Saul. We haven't done it. Might be interesting. We're discovering new options. No, it won't, Ghidorah. No, it won't. Well, the council has spoken. Good luck, Your Majesty. Soon the time has come. You board a ship and set sail to the newly risen island where the Archduke of Saul is due to marry his finfolk groom. Lacking a spouse, you've chosen the Chancellor as your plus one. Oh, I do love weddings, though I always end up a flood of tears. At last, the new island crests the horizon. It's an empty little rock, devoid of vegetation, with no buildings except a marquee and a hastily constructed church of a ninth. But it's packed with people, mostly minor nobles of Sal, who welcome you with cheers and bows. You file into the church. As the ceremony begins, the f Oh, I like that. That's a really cool character. The Finfo Prince walks down the aisle with his archduke of Sal, waits in class with hands. Does anyone know of any lawful impediment to those two being married in... I mean, I could totally torpedo everything. I could! The drama! 
the suspense! <laughs> do, 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 do we do it? I want to see the alliance, but... You know what? I'll roll a dice about it. Odds, I'll object. Evens, I'll let it be. Love wins out. That I now pronounce you married. That's that then. Time for a party! Everyone crowds into the marquee to get incredibly drunk. As you're making the rounds, chatting and gobbling canapes, you find yourself face to face with the Archduke. Your Majesty, thank you for coming. A toast to my new husband and I. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a very nice island, isn't it? Ooh. We could get 800 money. But we'll go for the alliance instead. I do, but we need to get to... Well, would you be interested in an alliance between Sala and my kingdom? It depends. What do you have to offer me? Uh, our finest cuisine? Hmm, I do love butter turnips. Very well, an alliance is born. Now let's enjoy the party. You celebrate long into the night and wake with a thudding headache. When you arrive back at the capital, the council is pleased that you have followed their advice. This alliance will bring us great fortune, your majesty. The new island proves to be immensely beneficial for Sal, and for you, their new ally. The Archduke is happy to share his trade routes with your merchants. Cool! For reasons you cannot quite fathom, a cloth covered cart is wheeled into your court. It stinks all the way to thereafter. Your Highness, I bring troubling news. Who are you exactly? I am Professor Drayton, Your Majesty from Quill University. This is the body of one of the Powers Watch. At least it was. He was slain a few months ago, Your Majesty, after trying to kill you. Do you recall? I was attacked by a beast, not a man. Just so, Your Majesty. This is he, transformed by some terrible curse. With your permission, I'd like to study him further to determine the curse's origins. The University would pay handsomely for the privilege, Your Highness. That gives us a thousand. Which then means we'd only have to lose a hundred to pay back. You know what? Yes, you may study the beast. I think it will help. You permit the study of the creature despite the clergy's grumblings. Weeks later, the startling news reaches your ears. There is a massacre at the university with a similar beast killing a score of professors and students alike, including Professor Drayton. This time, no chances are taken. The dead are burned immediately, including the beast. Failed eventually by the City Watch. You hope this is the last you will ever hear of this curse. It'll be fine. Oh, we, we didn't pay back the loan at one point. Your Majesty, I was going through the history books and I found this amazing, amazing, uh, day of kinship. I don't know about that. But Your Majesty, it sounds delightful. I hear it made things much more harmonious across the kingdom too. I suggest we reinstate the day of kinship. I would do something more low-key. Maybe we could have a small party in the Royal Palace then. Just something to recognize Queen Iger's achievements. Oh, that would be lovely. I'll arrange the food. I hope I'm invited. Of course you are. I'm sure the Spy Master could sort out the invitations. The two of you hurry away. Deep in conversation. <laughs> but is this an excuse just for a party? No! It was an excuse for a party. Amidst dark and foreboding forests, a small squat castle stands watch over the marcher border. There, at the end of the kingdom, a plot is hatching. Ha! The kingdom military is in shambles. Its pathetic weaklings couldn't fight their way through a field of rabbits. I'm drafting the reform proposals planned. The council will be more than happy to follow our lead. Good, but we must ensure we don't get skittish. The kingdom must be stable for our proposal to work. Grand, calm before the storm. Raise stability to five! Well, fortunately, the kingdom is literally a shambles. So, um... That's a problem. 
A celebration at the palace. The banquet table at the palace is laden with food, ready for the day of kinship. As your advisors file in, you settle at the head of the table. High Inquisitor is conspicuously absent. She's too busy for such frivolities. Your Majesty, I sent out letters to all the nobles who wished the festive greetings. And to flatter them a lot? That's quite literally most of my job, actually. <laughs> I did hope we'd do something on a larger scale. It's nice to come together and chat. Of course, Your Majesty, it's rather lovely. There's enough for me. What are the rest of you having? Please don't eat the entire banquet, Marshal. The Ninth God approves of restraint. Bah, who cares about restraint on a day of kinship, eh? We're here to enjoy ourselves! Alright, let's dig in. I quite agree. While the others exclaim, the Spymaster strolls out from behind a tapestry. Only the Chief Architect looks unsurprised. Ah, the old secret passage by that pillar. I've read about that at the University. Very skillfully done. The Spymaster inclines her head politely to him and settles down to tuck into my lavish dinner. A drink, Your Majesty? Give me many drinks. The mood grows raucous. The Treasurer and the Marshal argue about an old debt. The Archbishop and Ar Architect Archbishop get into an intense discussion about flying buttresses. Things get rather fuzzy. Then you have an idea. You stand up and pound your fist on the table. Your guests fall silent. You're all wonderful! That's why I'm marrying one of you tonight! Your advisors burst into laughter. Who do you intend to marry, Your Majesty? <laughs> oh no! Who do we intend to marry? <laughs> you, my master is best girl. It, it seems like the spy master is the one we are going to marry. Oh, okay. The Chancellor is our one best friend. People want me to marry the spy master. I mean. Sure, the Spy Master. The Spy Master snorts in amusement. I never thought you felt that way, Your Majesty. The Archbishop's right here. He can do it. Well, uh, yes, I suppose I can. You take the Spy Master's hands. I pronounce you married in the eyes of the kingdom. Hurrah! The others clap and cheer. The Spy Master looks most entertained. The party goes on, long to the small hours. You're about to go to bed when the door slams open. What is this servant telling me? You got married? Mother, meet my new wife. She stares at the spy master in shock. We can't have this. Archbishop, annul this immediately. That's easy enough. Nothing's been written down. But, but... She cuts you off with a glare. Call it an exercise of my right to veto. Very well, by the powers vested in me as the head of the church, I declare this marriage void. It shall be as if it never was. Perhaps better to avoid complications, Your Majesty. As the sun rises, it's time for bed. You fall into a long, luxurious sleep. Later, the Chancellor informs you across the kingdom, nobles and peasants will be busy celebrating the Day of Kinship too. Parties always get people in a good mood. A resounding success! That's the first time the Queen Mother has indeed appeared in forever. That is true. Your Highness, the loyal and baroness Neon Nautilus, no, Neon Bar the, the loyal and noble Neon Nautilus III has been taken hostage. What would kidnappers want with her? She's some criminal organization. These horrid miscreants demand gold and safe passage to Asmead in exchange for Neon Nautilus III's return. I mean. We could send the military in. Can't marry Spymaster. Zero out of ten. Way to offend the Spymaster, mother. Let's see how good the marcher military is against kidnappers. This is when it goes horribly wrong. Your military gets even worse. 
<laughs> you think the Majus military could do it? We're about to find out. So we need to balance the books so we end up with exactly 4,000 money. The, ex the assault is a catastrophe. The outlaws are more entrenched than anyone realized, causing a hard fought battle. I don't know, 25% interest. Though the Marcher forces are victorious, they're decimated. What's worse, Neon Nautilus III is lost in the chaos. When she's eventually found, she's face down a pool of blood. The barons are quick to blame the square for put the blame squarely on your shoulders. Whoops. Meanwhile, you have no weapons. Your Highness, really? We, we, we literally have one spoon. It's the only spoon in the kingdom. We must have a military. Please. Please, we must have a military. I look to your military woes and I say... No. There will only be one military, and it will be the chiefs. We will hold all the military power. There will be one spoon between the three of the the, the marchers and the barons. But the the barons and the grandees, rather. Watch this work. Watch it not work. You're just going to leave us to dry? Out to dry? The kingdom's instability makes it imperative that we're able to protect ourselves. We're now defenseless. Indeed, bandits and outlaws of all kinds quickly find the south a profitable place to conduct their operations. That'll be fine. It's fine. It's, it's, it's not fine. None of it's fine. You'll all be fine, though. Don't worry, everything will be good. It's good, you know, just ignore the fact that there's ten military between the three kingdoms and nine of it is in the chief's hands. It'll be fine, it won't be fine, none of this will be fine. We might actually be able to pay off the loan though. Are we voting to lower the chief's military out of spite? Is that what we're doing? We're voting for it out of spite. Well, if we can't have military, neither can you. It would seem so. <laughs> All right. Nobody voted for any schemes. They just voted to spite the chiefs. I mean, technically you two could rebel, but you have one military between the two of you. Oh, there are some very interesting events going on right now. The harvest in the north has been an utter disaster. Look at this turnip. Let me take a look. The turnip is riddled with rot, twisted in the grotesque shape of a skull. Half the harvest is like this. We need help if we're to get through the winter. This is probably nothing to worry about. Hmm. I mean, it, this is... He could send scholars from the university. I don't think turnips are meant to look like skulls. I, I don't think they're meant to look like skulls. Just saying. Not sure they're meant to look like skulls. I've seen a turnip in my time. By the old gods, we need grain, not wizened old men, to look at our blighted crops and mumble to each other about weather patterns. 
You send a fleet of scholars to the university to examine the fields of north. Whether or not the mystery is solved, a bleak winter lies ahead. Oh, it's, it's great. This is actually helping. The uh, actually helping. Okay. Um. Oh look, a crop blight. Pardon me, your majesty, but terrible blight has affected our cabbage crop. So what can we do about it? it breaks my heart, your majesty. We need to abandon the harvest and raise the affected crops. Hopefully, they will contain the spread and that mean a hard winter. Don't listen to these ignorant common folk, your highness. They're overreacting as usual. Burning the crops would cause far more famine than it could prevent. Mmm. Hmm. Yeah, you rebel with your combined one military. I don't think you need to rebel. We could consult a witch. You know, we're consulting a witch. This'll totally help. Witches know about farms. This definitely won't have any wide-reaching ramifications. Which witch are we going to consult? The witchiest witch that ever witched. It's gonna vote me, but I do like Faith going down. A local wise woman who lives in a thatched cottage nearby offers to work some of her minor hedge magic and return life to the soil. I can heal your ravaged fields if you keep the Inquisitors out of my lands. The barons are so desperate that they accept, despite the High Inquisitor's deathly glare. Soon, fields are rippling with renewed crops. Oh boy! Meanwhile... My liege, the merchants of the march are complaining about bandits. The marcher roads are too dangerous to travel, even with guards. Gangs of highly organized, well-armed highwaymen with ambush, well ambush merchant caravans are steal absolutely everything. Whoops, we have literally no way to do that. <laughs> we have zero percent. If we vote D, can we make it, can we work it out so that we end up with 4,000 money? I think we're going to go with D. Actually, no. Last time, we were able to get it so we only... No, I... 25% of 3,000... Oh, that's a good point! We only need 3,750! That's gonna be real complicated to get. You know what? I'm wrong. We're not doing that one, though. I do remember Baldur's Gate. I don't know if we can make it work. We'll try. We'll try and make it work. Have we ever heard of the... I have not, no. Never heard of it. Watch me try and make things fail, and yet inadvertently, we are not failing. We are totally failing. Ten gold per bandit scout by order of the king, reads the notice posted on village notice boards across the march. Adventurers, bounty hunters, and other scumbags sharpen their swords and venture out into the wilds. The plan is a great success, with dozens of rewards given to those intrepid mur these intrepid murderers in turn for hairy trophies. I mean, it worked! In the Grand Hall, a number of figures are hunched over hearth, plotting away. Has the Council agreed to hear our military reform proposals yet? No, not yet. The kid is too distracted with foolish business. If we can help calm things for a moment, we'll get our chance. You're not getting that chance anytime soon. Meanwhile, bees! Down in the south, Grandee Farsight 3 is visiting the wizard Athmeral in her tower, floating on an island amid the clouds. I walked through the apiary last night, and the dreams are still being ruled by their crystalline cities. What's taking so long? But please, just give us a few more months by the night that we'll let you down. Hurry up. I am not accustomed to failure. Sparks fly from Athmeral's fingers, and Grandee Farsight 3 yelps in pain, her hair standing on end. Despite not having any hair. 
All right. Can we make it 3,650? I don't think we can. We can make it just high enough that we can pay off the debt, though. We do that. We do this. That's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough either. Yeah, that brings us to 3,100. That'd be... We're going to have to do it. That's not enough. That way. That brings us to 3,900, which is just enough that we can pay off the debt. Just enough. Dead collection. Greetings, Your Majesty. I am here on behalf of Savlint and Gall to collect what you're owed. Delighted to see you. You owe us a grand total of 3,750 gold. Of course. Here you go. A pleasure doing business with you. Oh. That's it. Of course your majesty refuses to get married, against my advice. There's one other thing you're missing, however. Something even more important. An heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. A child would do, of your own would do trick, even if the legitimate or one of your cousins. I'm sure I have a cousin somewhere. Of course, an entirely sensible idea. The first we've had in ages. I'll make the arrangements at once. The Bandit Bounty! Your Majesty, I want to talk to you about the bandit bounty in the march. I have some concerns. That was a lengthy pause. Positively ominous. It's quite hard to verify a scalp. At the end of the day, it's just a tangled mass of hair. The adventurers and bounty hunters, they're definitely killing some of the bandits, as well as some people who look like bandits, or may be near some bandits, or who are walking suspiciously. We're just paying adventurers to murder random people at this point. I've ordered it to stop. And so the bounty hunting has come to an abrupt end, leaving the peasants of the march traumatized and paranoid. The outlaws still plague our roads, by my honor. The bounty may not have worked, but we need to do something. Well. Um. You know what? We'll send our battle-hardened regiment to rout the bandits. All none of them. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Oh, send the battle-hardened nobody. Send in the pool noodle. The one pool... This will not work. It's literally 0% chance. You probably have- no, I have, like, the pool noodle. One man has a pool noodle. You send a battalion of the march's hardiest veterans experienced in fighting in foreign fields. If they can't root out these bandits, who can? A month passes. You receive word the battalion spent weeks marching in circles and chasing bandits who would drop their weapons and blend in with the populations of local villagers. Finally, the soldiers' frustration turned to anger. In an attempt to flush out the bandit leader, your soldiers burnt an entire village to the ground and massacred dozens of peasants. The bandit leader, if he was there at all, escaped unharmed. March of peasants now view you as a murderous tyrant. I mean... Things aren't going well. However, we can turn this around! One morning, as you make your way to the council hall, a mob of furious peasants surround your carriage. They pelt the windows of rotten fruit and loudly blame you for everything wrong with the kingdom. Down with the king! The soldiers have difficulties in dealing with it, however. Ah, protect the king! Protect the... 
His words are cut off as he's dragged from his horse and beaten into a fine paste. The growing mob surrounds your stagecoach and begins rocking it back and forth. Your Majesty, make a break for it before they tip the carriage over. We'll stay here and hold them off. Aren't you meant to not talk? Be quiet! The sisterhood draw their scimitars and form a ring around you, sheltering you as you scuttle for safety. Stones rain down like hail, but you make it back to the palace unharmed. This is an outrage, your holiest. First riots and looting in the capital, now attacks upon your royal person. Our realm is on the verge of collapse. People are afraid. The rule of law is broken down. The peasants are demanding higher wages and more rights. Yes, but we can't obviously allow that. What do we do? Um. Um. I suppose we just round up all the rioters. Just, just round them all up? Don't worry, we'll find a way to tank stability eventually. Somehow, we're still clinging on. Desperately. At this point, I know you're all just here to watch how badly the train wreck goes, and I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Your soldiers face heavy resistance from the rioters, and hundreds of our troops, your troops are killed. Others desert to avoid fighting their own citizens. But the result is inevitable. Hundreds of peasant corpses hang from gibbets, left to rot along the King's Road as a dire warning. The riots die down, the common folk are terrified, but there are a few peasants to work the fields. I mean... It's alright, the treasury's almost empty, your highness. Time to crack open those tombs! The very gold isn't doing anyone any good, is it? Time to desecrate some graves! You order the mobile's themes dug up and looted. The result is quite a bounty. Gold masks, heaps of coins, precious to- You can't take another one. Not everyone is as practical as your treasurer, however. The church denounces you as a grave robber. Nobles and peasants alike are disgusted by your greed. Yeah, but we're not broke anymore. The scholars said you, you said to investigate the strange harvest has returned. All our tests came back negative. The blighted fields were dozens of miles apart, often with completely different crops. We only found one thing in common. Yes? The, the plowshares. They were all forged from iron from the same mine owned by Chief Clan Rabbit 13. But that couldn't be the cause, it's impossible. You better take a look at this iron, don't you think? Yes, Your Majesty. Good idea, Your Majesty. There's an iron crisis about to happen! Alright, so, border skirmish, food riots, and a refugee- Oh, there are loads of ways here to tank our stability. Let's go. Your greatness, the family of the North grows worse by the day. Riots are breaking out in all the major townships, from Skarma to Thorngard. Starving mobs are pillaging bakeries, granaries, and merchant houses. What are we to do? I mean... Nothing, probably. I mean, we could send in the army. We could also import massive amounts of food! That could work, we could go bankrupt again! That seems perfect! Let's go bankrupt again! Spend money! What's the worst that could happen, folks? Somehow I pull victory from the jaws of defeat with the rotted husk of our kingdom. I mean, we'll have 50 money. Love how said about go back up by throwing money at I mean, I'm... Yes! I'm not spending my money. The treasury is opened and a tide of gold flows out of the kingdom and into the pockets of Tavalinese uh, and Kurth merchants. In return, grain floods into the famine-stricken northern lands. Thank you, Your Highness. The gods are good. The unrest dies down as soon as the riders are bred again. It's enough to tie the peasants over to the next harvest. Meanwhile... 
The North is experiencing a terrible famine, Your Highness, and a steady trickle of refugees have been pouring into the march. And? They're looking for food and steady work, but finding neither. They've turned to begging. The streets of March of Cities are crowded with Northern vagrants. Well, I'm sorry that my suffering people are clogging up the precious March of Streets. They need help, not judgment. But will the Council give it? I mean, we're a bit too poor. How about we close the roads to the north? Just close the roads! That way they can't get there! Problem solved, right? I could have vetoed one of the choices. I could have. Look, everything's going great, okay? It's not going great. Hello, Captain Floofers! This is train wreck I'm orchestrating. The only there's no way to get anywhere without roads. This is just true. Closing the roads means sending soldiers out into the countryside to build barricades. This diverts manpower from keeping order with the north itself. Riots are widespread. Meanwhile, the flow of refugees in the march barely slows. They just abandon the roads and take the perilous journey across hills and forests instead. Tensions heighten between the barons. They <laughs> Your Majesty, our forces on the board are pathetically weak, and an insult to the march. The Ashmedian Empire has noticed that it's testing us. There was a major skirmish last week. We lost, and Ashmedian took 60 of our soldiers as hostages. We need to hit back with full force, teach them a lesson! With respect, Baron Shieldhope, you don't have the strength to take on Ashmedian right now, and if we don't ransom back your captured soldiers, your military will be weakened even further. We can't show weakness! Don't pay! Hello, Valtor! Uh, this kingdom's going great! This kingdom is not going great. It would have been funny. It wouldn't have worked. It's literally a 1 in 20. I, I get... If this works, though... It'll be neat. Can you imagine it? I could. However... Let's go with the, the uh, coin toss. You send the Ashmedians a defiant letter detailing how the hostages don't matter to you, that you have too many troops in fact, and that you better watch out and so on. But they ignore it completely. Continuing to make regular attacks across your border. <sighs> send in the troops! You send a legion of the march's best soldiers to besiege the border fort where Ashby keeps his prisoners. Unfortunately, the fort does what it's supposed to. It holds out for weeks, giving Ashby new forces plenty of time to arrive and smash your invasion to pieces. Your troops retreat in disarray. Ashby's soldiers begin a massacre at the border, preparing to capitalize. War looks inevitable. By the ninth, what were the council thinking? We're woefully unprepared for a war. It'll be fine. It won't be fine. So, here are some things you can vote on. Uh, I highly recommend, uh... I don't know. Who would have thought a 1 in 20 wouldn't work? Uh, I, uh, our lord right now is kind of, um, torpedoing the kingdom for the sake of fun. We've had some really good... At one point, this kingdom had tens pretty much across the board with the march. Uh, things did not go great after we awoke the sleeping bear that was Ashmead. And then the chiefs got in control. Generally, when the chiefs get in control, bad stuff happens. Should have gone with the first 5%. I still think it would have failed. I'm just throwing it out there. I still think it would have failed. Who knows picking kings by blood sack? Who knew? Who knew that blood sacrifice was a poor way of deciding rulership? <laughs> Alright, so we have war with Ashmi. Oh my. But we also have our heir. We finally have an heir. 
My adopt cousin adopted son! The assembled nobles break out in polite applause. My designator, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom. Your holiness may be the first to congratulate you. What's their name? Sven too. We are blessed, your highness. I'm sure Sven will be a chip of the old block. Congratulations on finding an heir. Somehow we managed it. Bad news, your highness. We just received a message from the Ashmedian ambassador, accompanied by a severed raven's head. The empire has declared war on us. Uh, why a raven's head? Some ancient Ashmedian tradition. The Ashmedian Empire's golden age is long behind it. They're still bigger than us, with more soldiers and a long history of conquest. But they lack discipline and are plagued with infighting. In our current state, however, the Kingdom's army is in no match for them. We should put up a fight for appearance's sake, then sue for peace as soon as we can. News of the war inspires a wave of patriotic fervor. Old knights come out of retirement. Naive youth stampede to join the army. Rest assured, you'll have our full support. What's our opening gambit? Send assassins? Build up defense? Honestly, build up defenses in the marcher border? Like, we need military? Hey, we're the ones on the defensive this time. P perhaps we can do something. But I don't want the march to have an army. Well, they won't when we lose. Oh, they won't when we lose. Pool noodles for everyone! Where's this money coming from? I don't know. I'll oversee you building up fortifications. The Empire's mobilizing only a fraction of its strength. If we bloody their nose, they might decide we're more trouble than we're worth. Meanwhile... The Burnt Village. Your Majesty, the peasants of the march were enraged by your response to the bandit problem. Perhaps burning down an entire village was a little heavy-handed. A feudal, or the feudal, or they must tie the share of the harvest to the barons. But this year they refused. The barons are not taking this well. The damn common folk makers look like fools. Our cities and castles could starve in winter if the council doesn't do something. Ah. Oh. I mean, we can't do this. You know what? Let's do that. C is good? Eh. I think B is better. Let the peasants keep the grain. Oh, oh you're fighting this one. You're fighting this one! Oh dear. This is turning out to be an absolute train wreck and it's amazing. And yet... The barons complain that without their customary share of the harvest, they'd be forced to buy their food at exorbitant rates from other regions. Meanwhile, sitting atop a mountain of grain going bad, the peasants sell it off cheaply and get richer as a result. And so, in roundabout fashion, the barons end up buying the grain from their own peasants anyway. For the first time, some of the increasing oh no, increasingly wealthy marchers join the middle class among scholars, lawyers, merchants, and priests. Meanwhile, suddenly this. After several rounds of deliberations, the council approves wide-ranging reforms to the Kingdom of Standing Armies. The barons of the march are said to be the major contributors of this model army, having volunteered their expertise and manpower in these trying times. We demand a foreboding march of fortress the barons are celebrating. Ha! I can hardly believe they went for it. This is all well and good, but we haven't won yet. We must make our final preparations. Raise own military, or quietly force the king to abdicate. You want to lower our authority? Or raise your military? Oh, it's neck and neck. But it wasn't another Baron victory. Apparently we are. The March hasn't won a battle in years. That's true. They didn't even win their own. Oh, no. One sneaky vote at the end. 
grand, it's settled then. With our new model army to control the kingdom's military, we need only knock the king down a few more notches to force abdication. You must lower the authority to five or less. Right, everyone. Okay. Can we get money to zero? No. Oh, we can't. However, we can get Bumpy to redeem the Avatar tax. The Avatar is greatly appreciative of your kind generosity, and we use those sesame seeds well. Use them very well. You know what to do? I'm gonna do this. Because we can talk about our ambition. At the start of your reign, you said you wanted to be the greatest king who ever lived. You're well on track to achieving that aim. Well done, your majesty. But to shut down the noble scheming for good, we need to build on that reputation. Your advisors have some ideas. We could crush those disloyal nobles, smash their armies, and force them to submit. On the other hand, your majesty, if you help us spread the zeal of the Ninth God, the church will lend our full support. With the backing of the church, the nobles wouldn't dare move against you. It's much more likely we're gonna succeed on this. That's 9, 10. Yeah, this is gonna get destroyed. A wise decision, Your Majesty. I'll send word to my priests. But of course, you need to be worthy. Your priority is to raise your authority in the kingdom's overall faith as much as you can. And of course, there can't be open rebellion among the nobles. Of which that's impossible. We've had the most extraordinary findings after studying the corrupted ore, Your Majesty. The, you call it extraordinary. I call it heresy. Oh, you're here. I'm here to dissuade you from listening to this madman. All I want is to advance the cause of knowledge without the Church's ignorance getting in the way. What have you found out? I assume you know of your scriptures, Your Majesty. You know what happened to the Eighth God after the manifestation of the Ninth. Uh, eighth the Sunder lies entombed. Yes, that's how the old song goes. The Eighth God was torn into eight pieces by the Ninth, and each piece was interred beneath the ground. After reviewing some ancient texts in the library, we believe the Iron Miner in the North must be near one of those buried pieces. The ore is cursed because it is infected by memories of a dead god. You seem excited. It's one of the most important discoveries of the modern age. We're allowed, we're allowed to study this all further, perhaps we can create an entirely new kind of metal. Thank you, Doze, for something for 48 months. That's four years. That's so awesome of you. If this ore contains even a shadow of the eighth power, we must rebury it or collapse the mine on top of it. The ninth god designed... De uh, deigned that the Eighth must stay buried, and so it must be. You will be squandering a resource of potentially incalculable value. If we could remove the curse, we could unlock the power of a god! I mean, let's be honest here. Oh, no! I mean... We should actually pick B? We should pick B. No, 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 hear me out. We should pick B. Because worst comes to the worst, we get a fantastic ending with Ashmead. Best comes to best. Awesome stuff can happen. We should absolutely vote B, because it's funny. Either way, it's going to end as a train wreck. Awesome stuff like a monoquid? I'm not gonna get a monoquid. Have you seen this? This is catastrophic. I'm doing this because it's gonna be hilarious when it inevitably blows up in my face, and it will blow up in my face. This is when somehow it doesn't blow up in my face, and I am stunned and amazed. It's also low as farming. The cursed mine support beams are removed by a team of brave miners. It collapses soon after, sending a great plume of dust into the sky. As a result, an iron shortage descends upon the north. 
The soldiers lack swords, the farmers lack plowshares, the chiefs are furious at you. Though perhaps they escaped a far worse fate. Meanwhile, the church praises your wisdom across the land. It'll be fine. We should have done this first. Your Majesty Ashmedian troops are massing on the march aboard her. The armies of the chiefs and grandees are marching, but not yet in place. For now, only the barons stand on the border, and Ashmead will attack at any moment. We could all the chiefs and grandees on a forced march at double speed, but it might exhaust them before they reach the battle. I mean... This is the only chance we've got! So our new monarch is Serevac. Our only chance is a 1 in 5. I don't like the odds. It wouldn't have got much better if we'd have lost to military. It would have been like maybe 25% or 30. This is probably going to go very poorly. Let's see how it goes. The troops march day and night, soldiers drop like flies, dying of exhaustion, but they reach the border in time to reinforce the barons. But it's all for nothing. They're so weary they don't stand a chance against the Empire's forces who smash them to pieces and sweep across the border. Ashmedian troops are flooding the border across into the march. What are we going to do? Soon as the meeting is over, I intend to ride down to the march and salvage the situation as best I can. Over the next few months, Ashmedian soldiers accompanied by enormous stubby war golems win several key victories over your troops and occupy much of the march. They loot, pillage churches, and raise farmlands. That's unfortunate. The war may already be lost. Maybe. <laughs> Meanwhile, chiefs are gathered. New report from the spies just come in. By Grahala's beard. Do you remember those military reforms the barons pushed through the council? They're trying to reorganize the royal armies to a fighting force that's loyal only to them. Too late to stop them. The reforms may have already been passed. We just have to delay them long enough for King Sven to solidify his power. Shouldn't be long now. Our king's on the verge of greatness. I can feel it. The chiefs must continue to aid the king by countering the other schemes. It might be a bit too late. Is it? Possibly not. Your Majesty, I've received messages from priests beyond the capital. They've been working hard to promote your power in every sermon. As they should. Let's see what they have to say. Your command of the kingdom is masterful, Your Majesty. The nobles are in no position to push back against you. Now a true journey of sainthood begins. We will scour the kingdom for miracles, so that you could show your holiness of your rule. 30%. It's very poor. After a few weeks, the Archbishop returns with an immensely sour expression. Oh, south, the South of Pig seems to be sick, but then she got up and walked. And a villager in the north claimed to have his statue of St. Bertrand start crying, but his neighbors say it was just the rain. I must make prey harder. With respect, Your Majesty, this is larger than just you. We must bring the lost sheep back to our flock. Without a faithful kingdom, there's little to be done. To improve your chances of victory, focus on improving the faith of the kingdom as much as possible. Yeah, about that. Your Majesty, the Empire's occupied over half the march to still advance to the capital. Our troops are in disarray. We're losing. But what can we do? We need to make a desperate, last-ditch attempt to drive the Ashmedian back. And if we fail, our goose is cooked. Pretend our capital has come down with the plague. Oh! Oh! Okay! That might work! If it works! It could! It won't. Hmm. To make this work, we need a lot of dead pigs to dress up as plague victims. I'm not sure there are enough pigs left in the whole kingdom. The spy master does her best, hiring a few actors to lie pathetically in the streets, theatrically groaning, but the Ashmedian spies aren't fooled. 
This fake plague business is a foolish idea. It's the king's fault for not vetoing it. Our media troops continue to advance the capital. Your marshal prepares for a siege. Hmm, I think we're in trouble. Every day more bandits attack our roads. Is this really important? I've looked into this, your majesty. A leader of sorts has emerged. From now, a lawless scum do his bidding. Thank you. He calls himself the Gallows Man, because he's given the noose twice and survived both times. He's a vicious fellow, and his bandits have been known to slaughter penniless pilgrims for sport. The local villagers are all terrified of him. That's why they don't turn on him in and let his gang hide amongst them when the sheriff comes knocking. Who cares who he is? We need to kill him and teach the others a lesson! Uh, I mean... Th that. Does it matter? The Ashmedians are about to destroy everything. Look at the time! I must swiftly return to my estate. Ta-ta! I mean, with our grand military of three. We tried, folks! 70% did not work. We got unlucky. To be honest, if I'd won the 30%, I was so close. I torpedoed this kingdom, and I was so close to victory. We were a 30% roll away from winning. But we ain't dead yet. Yes, we are. You said to spy for the, to find the gallows man, join his gang. He's it's an anxious few weeks. He's waiting to see what it was successful. Bad news, Your Majesty. The spy has returned, or at least some of him has, in a letter. She holds up an ear. The gallows man is a paranoid sort. He only trusts people who are willing to kill on his surface. My spy lacked that more flexibility. I apologize. I have failed you. And we're totally in the dark about what these villains might do yet next. In the absence of immediate consequences, the gallows man and his gruesome crew grow bolder by the day, even attacking barons in their carriages. Yeah. Um, so... We're not dead yet. The Empire has annexed almost the entirety of the march. Only small pockets of resistance remain. And now they're coming for us. An army is marching on the capital. Good God, we're doomed! Doomed! The Ashmedian ambassador has offered a sign to sign a truce and leave us alone if we hand over King Sven to the Empire. There's a long silence. You suddenly feel all eyes on you. Do you know what? Why not? It'll solve the problem. Look at those odds. I say I go out nobly. Hand over the king. I will hand over myself. And then you can vote for my heir, right? You can vote for my heir, right? It's that Anakin Padme meme. Bye, Sven. <laughs> oh. I'm sure they'll love you in Ashmead. I think you can. the vote comes in, the council turns to stare at you in unison. <laughs> You'll never take me alive! Uh... <laughs> You'll never take me alive! Ignoring your protest, your southern battalions grab you and bind your arms behind your back. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. This is the only tribute Ashmi will accept. It's for the good of the kingdom. A sack is thrust over your head. You're draped over a horse like a bag of turnips and ridden out to the waiting Ashmedian army. Ha! You turn against your king so easily. So it's confirmed. In exchange for the king, you'll leave us in peace? Of course. The emperor finds this deal hilarious. We'd never turn against him like this. We'd die to save him from stubbing his toe. It's not like that in the kingdom. I'm sorry, your majesty. Goodbye. When the Chancellor has ridden away, the Ashmedian ambassador whips the sack from your head. Your heart sinks when you see the chopping block and grinning executioner. Any last words, O oh King? Democracy was a mistake. Your legs are kicked out from under you, and your neck is placed on the chopping block. 
the axe descends. Your headless corpse is embalmed and taken back to Ashmead, where the Emperor uses it as a hat stand. See, look! Prince Sven is there! Oh my word, you're voting for Prince Sven. <laughs> you're voting for Prince Sven! <laughs> he was that much of a train wreck! Of course we want the mystery prize! What's in the box? You voted for Sven anyway! None of us want anything to do with this kingdom! The Baron's revolutionary plan for their new model army was quietly shelved, but not forgotten. These blueprints will surely come in useful someday. The chiefs celebrated the ascension of Sven II with vigor and enthusiasm. Their dominion over the kingdom was secure for another generation. But as the king, young king grew older, it became clear that he would not be so easily swayed. The, t the attempt to woo Athrol to the southern cause was doomed to failure. Eventually, the wizard, bored of these mortal quabbles, flew up to the clouds, leaving Grandy Farsight without help. After King Sven's unexpected death, the nobles agreed to pass the crown to his chosen heir, young Sven II. Whether this was out of loyalty, pity, or bitter compromise, who could say? Yeah, Athrol didn't even kill you! King Sven the Grave Robber! Technically, is a more is a monarch victory. Technically, I think it counts. <laughs> I think it counts. I won. <laughs> kind of. It does. It said at the top. Oh my word! We actually won. <laughs> the monarch's heir took the throne. This is true. I, I did. <laughs> Another great game, right? Yep. Yep, totally. Totally won. <laughs> yeah, that was planned. Not really. It was a draw. I would I would agree with it being a draw. Good luck recovering in this one. Oh, oh, oh you think I'm recovering? You, you think I'm recovering? I think next time we're just going to... Kiko, this could be a disaster anyway. Also, Kiko wins anyway. <laughs> I thought it was amusing the two times Kiko tried to tank the kingdom. He won. That was a dumpster fire of a win. It was a Pyrrhic victory. And you know what? Next time, folks, it's going to be even worse. Tripping our way over the finish line. Because next time, I'm going to make it even worse. You won because it was a disaster, probably. But I must thank you all very much for being there, folks. I would say that Sven is an Ashmead pub Ashmedian puppet. Yeah, probably. We may think about it. But I want to see how far it goes one more time. But I must thank you all for being here, folks, because you're all absolutely amazing and brilliant and fantastic and wonderful. Couldn't do what I do without you. I wouldn't want to do what I do without you. You, the heart and soul of my community, you make it all possible. And there are a couple of things I need to quickly talk about before we conclude. I'm glad you enjoyed it. First off, there is my website, gosky.com. You can check out all kinds of things there, including my schedule. We'll be throwing you dust on. You can also find it somewhere you can buy my girl and hope. Thanks, Blizzard. There's also my Discord, where you can join a large and thriving community, which I'm often a part of. There's loads of places to talk about stuff, loads of emotes, based on those places for you past and present. If you link your Twitch and Discord together, you can subscribe to Twitch, you can use the Twitch emotes on Discord, which is fantastic. Kiko, the one person that could win by losing or dying horribly, apparently. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Linguistic. Then there's my Patreon. There you can pledge to support me in doing what I do. Yes, I'll be let's play a stream my set up behind paywalls, so there is a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes that you typically do not see. Including but not limited to all the editing, impression, and test streams and test recordings and everything that makes all what I do a reality. And especially now more than ever with the mortgage and everything. In these times, I do rely on the people that pledge to me to make all what I do possible. And those that do, not only get a different card name on Discord and my deep and sincere thanks, you also get the ability to vote in upcoming playthroughs when the opportunity arises via the Patreon shortlisted vote. No problem, Ada. Then there are my YouTube channels. Kikoskia, my 16-year-old, 10,000 video strong Let's Play channel. So old. And Kikvodskia, my more recent VOD focus channel. And to get both of them to grow, which is, of course, the thing we all want, because more growth is always good, you must appease the algorithm. And by doing that, 
Well, to do that, rather, you must, uh... Well, to do, yeah, to do that, you like and comment on videos, sub if you're not, and if you are, sub, press that bell for those notifications! Words, they're sometimes hard. Then, there is my Twitter, and my Mastodon on Instagram, Blue Sky, the community tab on Discord, Oh, sorry, the community tab on YouTube and my Discord. Blech, words, I'm tired. Can you tell? There you can get notifications on when I start streaming, on my Let's Play videos go live, and all kinds of random other stuff, but that is not all. There's also a throne wish list where you can put money towards things that bring me joy, and right now, give me the ability to sit down and eat food, because uh, I don't have any, uh, any dining room tables or chairs. Every little bit goes towards that, and if you have other suggestions for things, you can put those there. Finally, there is me thanking all of you, because seriously, you are absolutely fantastic and amazing and brilliant and wonderful, and I couldn't do what I do without you, and I wouldn't want to do what I do without you. Thank you, Neon. You are truly the reason this content can happen. You are all wonderful and amazing and so awesome and supportive and kind, and just the most wonderfully supportive and wonderful community. I'm using the word wonderful a lot. It's a pretty wonderful word. How will you play board games? Um, at the moment, I have nowhere to play board games with. I really would like something to play board games on. But you are all truly wonderful, and I'm just so happy to have you all here. And with your continued support, I'll be able to keep doing this for many, many years to come. As many years as is possible. After a month or so of uh, house stuff, I will be doing some math on how much I need to be bringing in to make everything work, and hopefully I can make it all work, and if I need to get more income somehow, I will ha have to present that to you, and see what we can do. But, that's not for now. Whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I hope you achieve everything you set out to do. The next stream is tomorrow, 2pm BST, and I'm across into Horizons. We're going to be working on Chops' garden. We may also have time for the May Day ticket. Because it, uh... That is the thing that is approaching. May Day. And the May Day thing goes on to the 7th of May. In Animal Crossing. And I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later. And remember, be nice to each other, everyone. For if everyone is nice to each other, the world would be that much better a place. And we all want that, don't we? Well, I certainly do. And I hope you do, too. Later. Things are gonna get so much worse next time, folks. So much worse.